question if you're Galen Hall, the offensive coordinator. From fifth string in April to starting against the national championship Miami Hurricanes. It was amazing to see, though, the way that Bell maintained his composure, improved throughout the game, and got him in a position at the end of the football game with 40 seconds left. You can see it here. Frankie Neal makes a reception, and they go ahead of the Miami Hurricanes. And that's not all that Florida has. Florida has an outstanding running game and a potentially great offensive line. That offensive line is something to talk about, but the running game, those are the people who get all the publicity, of course. Like one man was Lorenzo Hampton last week. Lorenzo Hampton really showed his stuff. You're going to see him here, 64-yarder against the Miami Hurricanes, gets the ball. Joe Henderson, also a fine running back, takes out the linebacker. Gary Roll takes out two defensive backs. And Lorenzo Hampton, along with Neil Anderson, give Florida as good a pair of running backs as there is in the SEC. And what an offensive line. Look at this wall of granite. <laughs> the smallest one is 6'4 and 250 pounds. I've never seen five guys standing in a row that are as big as these folks. And it could be a problem for LSU to get pressure on Bell. And for LSU, a man you played for when your days with the Dolphins, Bill Arnsparger, their new head coach, you have to think defense when you think Arnsparger. And he's going to have to be a little bit of a magician today. Yeah, he's going to have to get pressure from his uh, defensive line, Barbe and uh, Henry Thomas, and, and from Michael Brooks. There's Roland Barbe popping up on your screen now. If they don't get pressure on Kerwin Bell, Bell, he's going to have enough time to settle down, and he just may pick apart an inexperienced secondary. They've got experience in Lippert Hobley. He's a free season All-American, and Jeffrey Dale, the strong safety, has seen playing time. But they're starting... Two inexperienced cornerbacks. The first start for Kevin Gidry and Norman Jefferson. And it could be a problem for him as the game develops. And it could be that LSU has most talent, maybe the most of anybody in the country. It remains to be seen on offense. What an offensive machine. They really do have some weapons. It's incredible. Eric Martin, number 41, Herman Fontenot. They're all fast, big. Three of them are ex-tailbacks. They can catch the ball after they have it. And they're, they're just a threat from anywhere. I know Joe Kynes, the defensive coordinator from Florida, is very concerned about this man right there. And he'll be pointed at him all day long. And when it comes to backs out of the backfield, they've got Gary James, number 33, Dalton Hilliard, 21, and even Craig Raskin catches the ball well. And these are the guys for Florida who'll be trying to stop him. Alonzo Johnson, a very good pass rusher. He's the closest thing, in the words of their coaches, to departed Wilbur Marshall for Florida. Here he is applying pressure to Kozar in that Miami game, allowing the secondary to break up the pass. However, there is a secondary problem and an experienced secondary for Florida, as Kozar proved at the end of that game versus Miami. This simple mental error, and that's what can kill you when you're playing pass defense. But Florida is not inexperienced anymore in the sense they've at least had one start. These two guys from LSU, it's going to be the first time they've lined up in front of 70,000 people, so it's going to be interesting. A full house at Florida Field. We'll be back in just a moment for the kickoff, but now back to our studios. Craig Zager and Paul Horning with SEC and national football coverage. field in Gainesville, Florida for the 1984 Southeastern Conference season opener for the Florida Gators and the Bengal Tigers of LSU. It's Bob Neal and Tim Foley happy to be with you once again on Southeastern Conference football. The marching Gators over 200 strong who delivered their pre-game performance here at Gator Field. Tim Foley there is a sea of orange for these Bengal Tigers to deal with today. They've got some folks with them from LSU, though, as the crowd began to warm up a little bit. We heard some LSU from over on the other side. And the Bengal Tigers are all penned up down in the corner of the end zone, just ready to enter the field now. It's going to be an exciting opener. For first game for Bill Arns, Barter, and... There they are, the Bengal Tigers, 4-7 and seven last year. Winless in the Southeast Conference, but a talent-laden team. And a new head coach from the Miami Dolphins, Bill Arnsparker. There's Florida. Losers last week to Miami. However, last year, Gator Bowl champions over Iowa. The finest season in the history of Florida. Florida was sixth in the nation last year. We'll be back in a moment for the coin toss and the opening kickoff. LSU and Florida from Gainesville. This is Turner Network Television.
and the captains from LSU and Florida set to meet at center field now for the coin toss here. Artificial surface at Florida Field. It's been added on to year after year after year, and now 72,000 fans can fit in here. There are the captains from the University of Florida. Number 16 is Chris Perkins, one of the kickers. There is the referee for today's game, Joe Hicks. Lifford Hobley, number 29 for LSU, shaking hands with the Florida players. And our referee, Joe Hicks, has season opener jitters. Didn't turn his microphone on there yet. If we can get him to flip it on, we'll take this coin toss live for you. Otherwise, we'll just be able to all watch it together. Captains, Jeff Wickersham, number five for LSU, to the left of your screen. Dale Dormany is also out there at middle field. He's a young man in crutches from Hylia High School. He was going to be the starting quarterback this year for the Florida Gators till he sustained a knee injury the Wednesday before the first game. There's the toss. <laughs> and a fumble on the toss by referee Joe Hicks. Settle down, Joe. That's okay. But he can do it again. Oh, he does it again. <laughs> I believe the Florida Gators have won the toss here. The crowd and you and I and Tim will be notified at the same time here. Toss is no good. <laughs> <laughs> that means that Florida has declined to make a judgment. They won the toss. They can either elect to decide on whether to receive or kick off. They declined that judgment, meaning they'll have it at the beginning of the second half, and LSU has elected to make that judgment. LSU will receive, and we'll see the Bengal Tigers on offense. As we begin this football game, the Bengal Tigers will be going right to left as we view them, and Florida left to right. As most of you know, this is the final season for Charlie Pell, Florida's head coach. As you know, he's resigned effective at the end of the year. The NCAA has been investigating recruiting violations at Florida and is expected to make a ruling on that at the end of the season. This week, this meeting began in 1937. The Tigers won that first game. The Tigers lead in the series 16-12-2. And, and by the way, LSU has defeated Florida here the last two times they've played at Florida Field. The deep receivers for LSU, number 12 to the left side, is Norman Jefferson. To the right side of your screen, number 41, Eric Martin. Both have good hands. Both are good returners. There is number 16, Chris Perkins, the long kicker and kickoff kicker for Florida. This game underway. Martin takes it in the end zone, goes out for the touchback, and the ball will come out to the 20-yard line, where we'll be on offense with the Bengal Tigers of LSU. Let's have a look at that offensive lineup in the backfield for the first time together. Hilliard and James. What a duo to run out of the backfield. Jeff Wickersham will be throwing to them and to Mitch Andrews, Eric Martin, and freshman Raji McGee, who's playing in place of the injured Herman Fontenot. There's the offensive line. Lance Smith, the right tackle, a preseason All-American candidate, and is down to his fighting weight from 300 pounds to about 280. On first down from the 20. It's complete to the tight end, Andrews. First down, LSU, he lost the ball. Let's see who has it. It was after he went down, LSU first and 10. Let's have a look at the Florida defensive alignment, the players who are starting this game for the Gators of Florida. You see the players who have not started before, Duhart, Ellison, and Armstrong. Tim Newton, the key in the middle. There's the backfield, and you see that the secondary is inexperienced. The handoff to Hilliard. Hilliard gets out across the 30 to the 33-yard line, brought down there. It'll be second down, long yardage for LSU. Newton with the tackle. You can look for LSU to throw the ball short early on in the football game. What they're going to try to do, I believe, is to try to suck those linebackers up, keep them from getting that 15-yard drop. So Andrews and, and James and Hilliard will catch the ball a lot early. Two receivers to the right, one to the left side, second down eight from the 33, complete to Martin across the 40 and down there. Tackled by freshman Jarvis Williams, number 26, the right cornerback for the Gators. Close to a first down, but I believe it'll be marked just inches short. And that was a one-back offensive set. They had three wide receivers in the football game. Three to one side, Martin down to the other side. They're trying to isolate Eric Martin on it, on Jarvis Williams. Third down, short yardage, double tight end. LSU, opening moment. That's Gary James getting the first down. 
behind Lance Smith and Kevin Langford on the right side of the line. He got out close to the 42-yard line. Tommy Duhart, redshirt freshman from Bell Glade, Florida, making the tackle for the Gators, number 78. Interesting story there, Tim, with Duhart at left defensive tackle. The man Florida thought would play, Greg Cleveland, has been suspended for being out of shape. Duhart really put the pressure on him. He came back this, this uh, summer in great shape and just performed so well that he became a starter, and Cleveland, I believe, got disheartened. Rathjen and Hilliard in the backfield now for LSU. First down 10 from the 42-yard line of the Bengal Tigers. This is Hilliard. Close to the 45-yard line. Leon Pennington, number 45, making the tackle for Florida. Pennington and Armstrong, the starting linebackers. Mark Korf had been the starter last week, but Pennington has replaced him there at one of the linebacker spots. Joe Kynes really likes Leon Pennington. He's really aggressive. It moves to the ball well. LSU has run five plays, and they've got five different formations so far. Second down seven from the 45. Gary James, number 33. Close to the first down. Inside Gator territory. Ricky Eason, number eight, with a tackle for the Florida Gators. And Gary James who was an outstanding freshman, had only 478 yards last year. Little counter trap. Hilliard goes to the left, James taking the ball back to the right side. He's being led there by Kurt Gore and John Harold. They want to get James outside. He's got the blazing speed. If he gets free, nobody's going to catch him. Double tight end, short yardage, third down one. LSU, that's Hilliard. Hilliard gets the first down to about the 47-yard line of the Florida Gators. LSU has driven this ball from their 20. And as you said, Tim Foley, we've seen a whole lot of formations and a great matchup between the center and the nose guard. Tommy Campbell weighs 230 pounds. Timmy Newton says he weighs in at 280. Big, strong nose guard. Now, if Campbell can control him, and I don't think he can one-on-one, -on -one, they've got to get him some help. They've got to eliminate Newton's movement in there. First down from the 47-yard line. Quick opener. Dalton Hilliard to the 43-yard line. That time, Campbell, Langford, Gore leading the way for some inside yardage for Hilliard. This is something that you can look to see later on. On that particular play, Greg Rathjen came back in motion and helped double-team Timmy Newton. He helped Tommy Cam Campbell, and together they moved him out of there a little bit. Number five, Jeff Wickersham, a junior from Merritt Island, Florida. Says he's excited playing in front of a lot of friends and relatives here as he's a Florida native. Wickersham. Complete intended for number 33, Gary James. And oh, what a hit that was put on by Adrian White, the sophomore from Orange Park, who plays strong safety. Jeff Wickersham really is maturing as a quarterback. He's now he's now has enough understanding about coverage that he doesn't begin to scramble as soon as he gets pressure. He sits in there and waits for the receiver to come open. He's going to be. He already is a fine quarterback, but he'll be exceptional before he's through at LSU. He'll bring, he'll bring a lot of thrills to Tiger fans. Big third down conversion, third down six. Wickersham in the pocket, over the middle, first down to the 34-yard line. That pass completed to number 80, redshirt freshman Raji McGee from Bogalusa, Louisiana. This is exactly what I was talking about two years ago. He's looking for Aaron, Eric Martin to the right. Martin's not there. He comes off Martin. You can see him change his vision, finds McGee for the first down. Excellent play. First down 10. Now number 13, Rapkin back in there with Gary James. Bobbled ball by James, but he falls on him. Loss of two or three yards. That was just prior to my saying this LSU offense looked quite comfortable with all the motion and all the different alignments and formations as they've driven from their own point. One thing they're going to try to use, I think, against Florida is confusion. Ed Zombrecker's our offensive coordinator from Wake Forest, and they've had to throw the ball to stay alive at Wake Forest, and got a lot of different formations that you'll see today. Second down, 13 from the 37. 10-37 to go. First quarter, this is Dalton Hilliard, close to the 30. Put down the linebacker, number 45, Leon Pennington. He had a twisted knee, Pennington did, early in the fall. He's playing well now. Dalton Hilliard, if you want to talk about the difference between Hilliard and James, 21 and 33, Hilliard is the scat back, the quick runner the darter. James is more of the true tailback type in, in terms of straight, pure, straightaway speed and as more talent as a pass receiver. Third down seven. Another important conversion play. LSU at the 31 of Florida. Plenty of time. Incomplete intended for Andrews at the 25 and Jarvis Williams 
laid a lick on the big tight end for LSU. Wickersham, good drop. He looks to Martin. Martin is covered. They're double teaming him. Andrews coming open underneath. Nice job by Jarvis Williams. They expect Jarvis Williams after his time here in Florida to be a pro prospect. He's, he's a big hitter and he's got excellent quickness and acceleration and break on the ball and you saw an example of that on the last play. We're going to have a 47 yard field goal attempt by LSU. This is Juan Batanzos who led the team in scoring last year but Arns Parker says he's been inconsistent. Hit it well. It's no good and there's a penalty in the end zone. There is a penalty marker in the end zone. marker in the end zone but Tonzo's hit the ball far enough but not accurately enough delay of game the call against LSU that has been of course I'm certain declined let's see what the call will be here I'm sure that since they missed it delay of game against the offense declined first down I thought so. The LSU defensive team was headed off the field, but I'm sure Florida wasn't going to give him another chance, even for five yards further back. So now the Florida Gators go on offense as the referees get their act together. It's early in the season for everybody. 1984 Southeastern Conference football. We're at the home of the Gators, Florida Field in Gainesville. A packed house, 72,955 remaining in quarter number one. Scoreless game, and this will be the first opportunity for Florida. This is the first collegiate head coaching football game for that man, Bill Arnsberg. Bill's quite a guy. I've got a friend named Cleve McClary that said uh, his dad always taught him if you're going to kill time, work it to death. And uh, for some reason, I think that Cleve's dad knew uh, Bill Arnsberger. He's the most thorough coach I've ever seen. Now we've got a change on the field here. Well, now the Florida defense has gone back out. They may say that because, and as a matter of fact, the point here is very clearly, because it was delay of game, LSU has to play it over. The play never took place. There was no option for declining or accepting the penalty. And now it's going to be a punting situation for LSU. So it wasn't a case to where Florida would decline the delay of game. It is not declinable. Delay of game, penalty, dead ball foul, penalized five yards, still fourth down. You know, it sure is nice working with a play-by-play -play guy that knows his football. Knowledgeable Bob Neal. Good job. I'm sure the officials know their football. They just forgot. However, they've recouped, and now we have not the field goal situation. Now we have a punting situation. This is Clay Parker, senior from Grayson, Louisiana. Had a great year in 82. Not such a great year last year. Says now that he thinks he can average 40-plus yards per punt. Barefooted punter. Angling for the corner. Well hit and over in and out of bounds. It may go out of bounds way upfield here as the officials keep walking it up. Not a good punt by Parker. Out to the 17 yard line. He did get it inside the 20, but only a 19 yard punt by Clay Parker. He would like to have had more. Now the Gators have the ball. They did lose field position because of the delay of game penalty by LSU. So it's a scoreless football game. We're in the first quarter, 9.48 remaining. Back to Florida Field in Gainesville in a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Charlie Pell in his last year as head coach of the Florida Gators. But what a great time he's had the last four seasons. In that time, the Gators have appeared in four consecutive bowl games. On offense now for the first time in this game, the first time in 84 at Florida Field. There's the pitch to John L. Williams, the fullback, running off the left side. Gets out to the 22-yard line, where he's tackled by LSU linebacker number 37, Rick Chapman. And here's a look at the Florida Gators offensive lineman. Kerwin Bell, the quarterback we talked about on the pregame show. Fine running backs, Anderson and Williams. You'll see four backs, however. And also the receivers, Mateel and Roll, will alternate with two other receivers. Odom is their fine tight end. There's that Florida offensive line. Big, powerful, and only one inexperienced player, number 74, Zimmerman. It'll be second down five from the 23. Pitch to Neil Anderson. Across the 25. To the 26-yard line, tripped up by the middle guard, number 96, Henry Thomas for LSU. An LSU defensive team. has some pretty good players. Some holes, however. The man who made the tackle is a youngster, Henry Thomas. That'll be one of the keys to the game. Barbe, one of their leaders. There's that secondary. 
you see that Dale and Hobley, the safeties, are two of the finest in the game, but they're weak and inexperienced at cornerback with Gidry and Norman Jefferson, who didn't play much last year. Third down one, Florida. Off the left side, first down. Close to the 19-yard line, close to the 29-yard line goes John L. Williams. The heart of this offense is that offensive line. As I said, Brownlee, 250 pounds. The next smallest one's 280 pounds. When you stand in front of them, you feel like you're standing in a Mack truck parking lot. You're just looking up, looking right in the, the chest of all these fellas. And they're not fat. They're not big, fat fellas. They are strong and massive. 86 roll is split off to the bottom of your screen. It is first down, 10 Florida. That's Anderson in motion out of the backfield. Complete for a first down to Gary Roll, a senior from Miami, Florida. Kevin Gridry, the freshman quarterback, number 27, making the tackle for LSU. Another Gator first down. Okay, we're going to see this again. Kerwin Bell rolling to the strong side. He's reading Jeffrey Dale. Jeffrey Dale breaks in the flat to cover the back, and so he unloads it to roll underneath. You'll see that pattern a lot today. Nice, simple read. He makes his throw depending on the uh, po position of the strong safety. First down, 10 Gators at their own 42-yard line. Scoreless game, 7.52 to go, quarter number one. This is John L. Williams. Close to the first down, inside Bengal Tiger territory. Rick Chapman, number 37, the inside linebacker on the right side making the stop. Of this man, John L. Williams, former tailback. That's why, even though he's a fullback, he can get outside. You know, a, a nice block by Neil Anderson there on Jeffrey Dale that kept the contain from getting up in a hurry. You'd like to contain that toss quickly. Have the tailback turn it back into the pursuit. Second down, less than a yard. That's the 48, double tight ends for the Gators. Williams hit hard, bounced off, drives forward, first down, Florida. To the 46-yard line. Williams took a real pop from Mike Brooks, number 94, but bounced off it and still got the first down. First down, Florida. Galen, I'm sorry, Bob. Galen Hall doesn't want this game to revolve around the performance of Kerwin Bell. You know, he wants that experienced offensive line and that bevy of running backs to take some of the heat off Bell so they don't have to throw the ball. McDonald and Neal, the wide receivers in the game now. McDonald, number nine, Neal, number 21. That's Neal in motion. First and 10 from the 46. Hand off, Lorenzo Hampton. Inside the 45 from the 43-yard line, number 57. Linebacker Sean Burks with the tackle for LSU. You'll be hearing the names of Chapman and Burks a lot, as those tackles for the LSU defensive team are funneled toward those two as often as possible. You can see Steve or Hodge has come into the game for Jeffrey Dale. And Burks does an exceptional job of filling that hole. He doesn't pursue down the line of scrimmage. He comes across and hits that tailback before he gets a chance to get to the line. Scoreless ball game, 6-16 to go, quarter number one. Four on the ball, second down seven at the LSU, 43. Motion. Out of the tailback position is Hampton. Hampton with the screen to the right side. Driven out of bounds at the 37 and a half yard line by Steve Rehard. About two yards short of a first down. This is the way that a defensive coach would like the strong safety to play this play. He holds off the slant pattern to the wide receiver, then reacts up to the ball as it is caught by the back. And they're just going to gain four or five yards every time they throw the ball. What you have to do is occasionally mix up the coverage so they get a different look. The throw by Bell. There's Bell. He had a good game against Miami last week for a freshman. One TD, one interception. Important conversion here. Third down one, Gators. John L. Williams cuts against the grain, gets the first down inside the 35 to the 34. Number 77, Roland Barbe, the defensive left end with the stop for the Bengal Tigers. today is only going to be in the very low 80s a nice breeze as a matter of fact it's more than a breeze sometimes wind gets up to about 20 miles an hour partly cloudy here in Gainesville Florida wonderful Saturday afternoon for football first and 10 from the 34 for Gators picks up in the backfield Bell rolling throwing number 82 Walter Odom Odom inside the 10 to the 8 yard line Gator first down tackled by Dale 4 and Hobley 29 for LSU 
just a naked bootleg, makes the fake. The tight end snuck inside. The strong linebacker settled down in the open area. Probably didn't see him until too late, then hustled back to make the play. 26-yard pass reception, 25 yards, make it. And now Bell is two out of two throwing the football this afternoon. First down goal from the eight-yard line for the Gators. Scoreless game, they're threatening. This is Hampton, penalty marker down. Hampton goes down at the five-yard line. Penalty marker on the near side in the Florida backfield. Both offenses performing extremely well. You saw last week against the uh, Miami Hurricanes, Florida was a, a little bit tenuous. They're trying to get used to a new quarterback on the snap counts. And every once in a while, the ball came up too early or someone jumped off sides. Kerwin Bell looks to have worked himself into a confident position. And again, they're not giving him too much to do. They're giving him simple reads and so far is reacting well. Penalty is going to be against the Florida Gators. Referee Joe Hicks marking it off right now. Something the NFL is doing this year. They're having the linesman mark off the penalty while the referee announces it to save time. There you go. Illegal procedure is the call against the Florida Gators, and they move the ball back to the 14-yard line. That's a big penalty because now it is first down and goal from the 14-yard line. Crucial mistake inside the 10-yard line for the Gators. 453 to go, quarter number one, scoreless ball game. Single setback. It's John L. Williams. This is complete to Hampton at the nine-yard line. It'll be second down goal from the nine for the Gators. It's the same play pass that they use to get down in this situation. Bill Arnsbarger trying to get used to not making the calls. He's monitoring all the calls, both on offense and defense. The man that's making the calls onto the field is Mike Archer, former defensive backfield coach with the Miami Hurricanes. But this is, gonna, this is a new role for Bill. I'm, I'm sure he's anxious. Hampton's out. Anderson in the backfield for Florida. Second down goal from the nine. Bell throws it in the ground. John L. Williams was open momentarily. He was being covered by 94 Mike Brooks. It'll be third down goal from the nine-yard line. These Florida receivers, by the way, while we're talking about receivers, uh, the split ends and flankers, Nateel and McDonald alternate at that position. Roll and Neal alternate at that position, as does Anderson and Hampton at that running back position. So you see them roll in and out of the game regularly. Third and goal from the nine. Bell is four out of five for 48 yards. That was his first incompletion. Crucial play here. Pressure from Barbe. receivers at that time he was trying to get it back to Odom on the weak side after he felt the pressure Pick this up and good we're gonna see that again Tim Foley this is a heady play by a freshman from Mayo Florida Kerwin Bell rolls to his right he's got three wide receivers on the strong side LSU fine job of coverage Barbe pressuring now he's looking for Odom back to the weak side not enough room not enough daylight let me see what I can do with it dad Touchdown, he slides it in under Ricky Chapman. The ball pops loose, but they decided he crossed the plane of the end zone. And as we get a good view from our TBS Sports Production cameras in the end zone, we can see that he had, in fact, crossed the goal line. And Kerwin Bell, a happy young man with his first collegiate rushing touchdown. 4.30 to go in quarter number one. The score, the Gators of the University of Florida 7, the Bengal Tigers of LSU, nothing. the Florida Gators happy at the moment a 7-0 lead in this game and they'll be kicking off to LSU again the deep receivers are Norman Jefferson and Eric Martin Jefferson 12 Martin number 41 he elects to return not much there to the 14 yard line 
Bengal Tigers will start out in the hole. James Massey, number 42, with the tackle for the Florida Gators. He's the third team tailback. And there it was, 83 yards, 13 plays, five minutes and 18 seconds of possession time. And uh, it was an, a well-executed drive by these Florida Gators. All the way down the field, a good mixture between the pass and the run. Everything solid. No big risk-taking, overcoming a third and 13 situation to score. And off Hilliard. Out to about the 18-yard line. Hilliard is tough to bring down. He's only 5'8", weighs 190. He's a junior. He led the team last year in rushing with 747 yards. Dalton Hilliard is deceptively strong. Because he's short doesn't mean he's easy to knock down. He's a great player. Ed Zombrecker says, as you alluded to earlier, he's got tremendous quickness and he can hit holes that other people don't even see. Second down, six LSU from the 18, trailing seven to nothing. Wickersham over the middle has a man. Mitch Andrews first down across the 25 to the 26 yard line. Mark Korf in at linebacker for the Florida Gators. Now Pennington had started at the strong linebacker position and Mark Korf in there now. Just to lower it, you see the Florida linebackers turning to run out of there. Wickersham just dumps it to Andrews. And they're going to get that completion. The idea is they're trying to suck those linebackers up so they can hit Martin or McGee in behind that coverage. And we have an injury on the field. It's number four, Vernell Brown, the free safety for Florida. Exactly what the Gators did not want to have as they are not deep in the secondary with replacements. And... We'll be back in just a moment to talk about what they'll do if they have to replace players back there. You stay with us. It's Gators 7, Bengal Tigers nothing. This is Turner Network Television. Vernell Brown, the injured Florida player, is on the sideline. Looks to be okay. Roger Sibble, number 25, is replacing him in the game right now. It is first down 10 LSU from their own 26-yard line. Hand off Gary James. Knifing through number 93, Alonzo Johnson, the junior from Springfield, Florida. They say Alonzo Johnson is the closest thing to Wilbur Marshall in terms of a, a tough force playing uh, defensive lineman for this Florida team. There he is, number 93. The hardest thing for a big man like Johnson to do is protect his feet. Rathjen was trying to cut them out from under him on that play. He fought off the block to make the tackle. James in motion to the top of your screen. Play fake, Wickersham over the middle. Goes to James, nice catch. Uh, excuse me, Mitch Andrews, first down. Mitch Andrews, number 83, the tight end. Vernell Brown made the tackle. He is back in the ball game. This is a formation that Florida hadn't seen yet. They're motioning the trips. Wickersham not looking for Andrews at first, but he was so wide open, he finally got him the ball. Andrews has three catches, by the way, in this game already for 31 yards. And the sore back. It is first down 10, LSU. There's Rathjen, motion to block, and off Hilliard. 43-yard line, right over right guard. Kevin Langford, the player there. When Rathjen's in the game, he's a sophomore from Houston. You'll see him coming across in motion, making that block, Tim. He'll, he'll come into the line and block on Newton, and, and what's going to happen? Of course, Ricky Williams is in the game now, but what happens is that middle guard begins to feel that motion. He begins to feel the pressure, and uh, he, it gets him thinking about something other than beating the man across from him. Final two minutes of the first quarter. Gators lead 7-0. LSU on the drive. Fumble, ball loose. Looks like the Gators fell on it, but it's still loose. Gator football at the 43-yard line. Jarvis Williams, number 26, with the ball. A big turnover, and the Gators take over. Simple miscommunication here. Wickersham, Wickersham reverse pivots, tosses the ball to James. James isn't looking for the football, and it gets, there it is on the ground. Florida hustles to the ball. We'll be back in a moment. Gator ball. This is Turner Network Television. There's Jarvis Williams, number 26, the freshman from Palatka who recovered the fumble. He's a freshman right cornerback, the least experienced of the Gator defensive secondary, and a big turnover for Florida. They lead 7-0. A minute 59 to go, first quarter. First down 10 at the LSU, 43-yard line. Here they go. He has McDonald wide open. Discussed during the timeout. That's
this is a perfect not time to swing from the floor. You've got some momentum, and this is nothing fancy here. Old Kerwin unloads it down the field to Ray McDonald, who's Florida's fastest receiver, and he just ran by an inexperienced Norman Jefferson for six points. Florida 13, LSU nothing. Point after attempt by Bobby Raymond. Is good. And the Gators have taken a very large 14-point lead with a minute 53 to go in quarter number one. One outstanding 83-yard drive and then immediate capitalization on the opportunity created when LSU fumbled the football. A 43-yarder from Kerwin Bell to Ray McDonald. What a thing of beauty. And the defensive secondary of LSU was caught way up field, Tim. Well, he just didn't get his body turned in time to get in to run. Jefferson can run. He just let the young man run by him. First down, as a defensive back, you always have to be thinking about takeoff. They try to long pass, and then they have two downs to make up for it if they don't complete it. That's one of the things that you should be thinking about, and I'm sure Mike Archer is talking about Norm Jefferson, talking to Norm Jefferson about that right now. That was Ray McDonald's first touchdown reception, by the way. He's a junior from Belle Florida. And there's nothing more helpless I've been in that situation than to see that ball going over your head and you just can't do anything about it. Here's Bill Arnsbarger, and he's been in this situation before. Over the last 19 years in the NFL, he's been in this situation before. He brought back the Dolphins from 24 to nothing deficit uh, against San Diego. So what he's got to try to do is help his team maintain composure. Still a first quarter, a lot of time left. Jefferson and Martin back. Ball is going in and out of the end zone. It comes out of the out-of-bounds side for a touchback. A new rule in college football this year. If kickers kick the ball all the way out of the back end of the end zone, the ball is brought out to the 30-yard line. That was done as an encouragement for more returns and more excitement. Why the colleges did not decide to simply move the kickoff placement back five yards instead of forcing the penalty on, I don't know. But nevertheless, that is the rule this year. So you'll see kickers kicking off from hash marks and trying to angle for the corners. What they want to do is kick it into the end zone and out of bounds. They put it on the 30-yard line. Now, Charlie Pell is uh, trying to get the attention of the referee. It seems as though it should have been on the 20 instead of the 30, but the referee made a mistake. It has to go over the end line. It went over out of bounds. Charlie Pell is right. Hand off. LSU up the middle. Dalton Hilliard out to the 31-yard line. So Coach Pell has a reason to be upset. That was an incorrect ruling. Penalty marker on the... Oh, no, that's a yellow helmet. <laughs> And there is Ray McDonald, the junior, hey, who caught his first collegiate touchdown pass moments ago, a 43-yarder from Kerwin Bell, who's, by the way, five out of six for 91 yards. Martin and Roger McGee, the two split ends for LSU on second down nine. Complete over the middle again, out to the 34-yard line. That was Dalton Hilliard with the reception. Ron Moten, the linebacker, number 58, with the tackle for the Florida Gators. A Moten and Pennington were all over Mitch Andrews that time. Now, what's happening is they're beginning to pay a little bit more attention to him. Look before long to see them hit Martin coming in at about that 20-yard line depth. Near, yard deep, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Near side is Fontenot. Three receivers in the game on the third down four. Plenty of time for Wickersham. It's complete, but I don't know if he got the first down. Let's see where they spot the forward progress. I think the official is going to say it's inside the 40. McGee was hit instantly by Leon Pennington. Short of the first down, Tim. McGee lined up to the wide side of the field, worked his way back, tried to find the open area in the zone back to the sideline side. It looked as though his feet were on the 40-yard line as the tackle was made and brought him back. But that's, that's an arbitrary call. The primary point of concentration has to be get enough for the first down. This is the first critical play for LSU. Fourth down goal for inches. <laughs> There's Gary James. And he gets the first down over on the right side. A gutsy call by Arnsparger to go for first down on that fourth down short yardage. What they did not need to do was turn the ball over to Florida at that position again after Florida just scored from there. So LSU maintains their drive out to the 43-yard line. First down 10. Bengal Tigers trailing by a score of 14 to nothing as the first quarter comes to a close. In the 1984 Southeastern Conference season opener for Florida and LSU. Florida Fields, 72,000 folks in Gainesville. This is Turner Network Television.
first of today's game are brought to you by Chrysler Plymouth. Quality products from the new Chrysler Technology. And by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light. Two great tasting beers. It doesn't get any better than this. Ready for the second quarter. Florida leading 14 to nothing. LSU ball. First down 10 at the 44 yard line of the Bengal Tigers. Tim Foley pretty soon. The Tigers are going to have to start thinking about putting something up on the board. Complete to Eric Martin who breaks tackles and gets to the 49 yard line of the University of Florida. One of the things Martin does best is run after he catches the football. The converted tailback, uh, just exceptional acceleration with the ball. As you saw there, keeps fighting. He's not like some receivers that just hunt for the sideline. Second down. LSU, just inside Florida territory. Quick opener, he'll you. Something he's very good at, very close to the first down. LSU keeps picking him up by inches, but that's all that matters if they can maintain the drive. See where they spot the ball. Leon Pennington with his fourth tackle of the afternoon. The linebacker who started on the strong side in place of Mark Cork playing very well here today. Short of the first down. Third down, less than a yard for LSU. Martineau splits wide to the left side. Martin wide to the right side. Hilliard and James to the backfield. It's complete to Fontenot to the 41-yard line. First down, LSU. Jarvis Williams with a tackle. Tackle by Perfect play by Jarvis Williams here. First down, As we watch Timmy Newton working against the uh, offensive lineman of LSU. Does a nice job coming up, attacking and making the tackle. That's the big thing there. On the first down, 10. Here's the misdirection play to Gary James, spinning and turning a la Tony Dorsett inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. And Gary James tackled by Patrick Miller, but James with a nice gainer and a first down for LSU. This is important. LSU has to get something going on the ground. They don't want to be forced, even though they're behind 14 to nothing, they don't want to be forced into throwing the football. They open up a nice hole for the first time of the game, up the middle, and you can see why they call James the knifer. Hits it in a hurry. James out, Rathjen in. First down 10, LSU at the 24 of Florida. Here's Hilliard. Breaks a tackle. Goes down. 18-yard line tackled by Vernell Brown. Hilliard, very elusive. And LSU keeps their drive alive, the closest that they've gotten so far in this ballgame. LSU opened up with a very successful drive, couldn't uh, connect or finish the drive, and went for a 47-yard field goal that was missed by Batanzos, and that's why LSU is scoreless. Two errors on offense. Uh, they had a fumble in the first drive and then that they did not lose, and then a fumble in the second drive that was a turnover. Second down three. Slot left formation. They're running right. Hilliard gets the blocking. Gets the first down. Inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. Burnell Brown with a tackle again. It'll be first down goal. Bengal Tigers of LSU. Let's watch this offensive line of LSU work. You see Mitch Andrews there. Lance Smith. Pulling around there. Kevin Langford, offensive captain, doing a nice job. Getting movement off the line. Controlling the line of scrimmage on that play. Letting Dalton Hilliard look for the opening. Rathjen and James in the backfield. First down goal, LSU. This is James. Drives to the three-yard line. Second down goal from the three for LSU. A nice job of intelligent running and reading by Gary James on that sweep to the right side. And an injury, Mark Korf, number 59, the man down for Florida. He was also the man who made the tackle. Corp has been a fine player for him over the year, years at Florida. He's got four strong linebackers. Let's see if we can pick up uh, what happened on this play. Corp, number 59, making the tackle on 33, James. Here's the toss to James. And as Bob said, he's patient. Waits for his opening. Rathjen gets the block there, turns it upfield. Here comes Corp. Going to see it from another angle. Puts a face mask right in, right in the chest. Good tackle, and I don't know if he pinched a nerve in his neck or if he hurt his knee. Can't see what he grabbed there, Bob. Looks to be okay as he heads off. We'll get an update on whether he's injured seriously or not. By the way, James has seven carries for 33 yards in this game. Hilliard, 11 for 43, so the, the Dalton James gang running along pretty well. An NCAA update, Oregon State defeating Ohio State 7-3 in the first quarter. 
Joe Avizano's bunch has a lead early in Columbus, Ohio. And back Joe. You know, they're running over to the right behind Lance Smith, who uh, last year was touted as a preseason All-American, came in at 300 pounds and didn't really play too well. This year he's got a whole new attitude and he's weighing 263 pounds and he's just lean and mean and ready to go. It will be second down goal from the three yard line for LSU. LSU has two tight ends in the game. 83 Andrews, 81 Curtis. The backfield, 13 Rathjen and number 21 Dalton Hilliard. In the power eye. Hilliard driving, driving close, but no cigar. About a half a yard away for Dalton Hilliard. It'll be third down goal for LSU. Moten and Pennington with the stop for the Gators. We're at the point, Tim, of the classic goal line stand as Orange Parker will try to figure out how to get this ball in the end zone. One of Bill Arnsparger's biggest assets as a coach is his patience. He's going to wait. He's going to take his time. He knows there's a lot of time left in this football game. Quick call. Hilliard spinning. I don't believe he got it. No, they're saying he got to the one-half yard line. Armstrong and Moten made the stop. The fans at Florida Field love it. The job of a defensive lineman in this situation is to just bury yourself, force that running back to leap. Scott Anderson, uh, Armstrong, excuse me, comes over the top and nails Hilliard before he has a chance to even leave the ground. LSU going for it on fourth down in the power eye. Number 80 is McGee, the front man. This is Wickersham throwing wide open. Touchdown! Number 81, Earl Curtis, the senior from Lafayette, and the Bengal Tigers have come back. It is 14-6 with 11.31 to go, second quarter. Gutsy call by LSU. Fakes the ball up the middle, and the whole Florida team is coming up over the top. And there's a fellow that doesn't catch too many balls, Earl Curtis, uh, regarded as a fine blocker, not much of a receiver. He kind of sneaks out there and works himself into the open. Second touchdown in his career. He had a catch in 82, none in 83. But Conzo's point after, good. And with 11.31 to go, second quarter, the score. The Florida Gators 14, the Bengal Tigers of LSU 7. Back to Florida Field after this. Here it is again, Tim, the touchdown. Just in a power eye. Fakes to the right. Not a real good fake, but in that situation, Florida's just thinking upfield. And if they're talking about touchdown passes being caught, they're certainly not going to be too concerned about Earl Curtis. He slid out in the open and pulled in six points. He caught a touchdown pass in 1982. No touchdown passes in 83, and that's his second collegiate reception and a very big one for LSU. And Arn Sparger, two times, has gone for it on fourth down. Once for a first down, that time for a touchdown. DeFrank with a kickoff. Lorenzo Hampton will touch it back in the end zone. It'll be first down 10 Florida out at the 20-yard line. Gators leading by a score of 14 to 7. 70 yards and 14 plays for LSU. It took five minutes and 22 seconds. These teams are amassing, for the most part, with the exception of the turnovers, long drives. LSU opened with one all the way downfield. Florida came back with an 83-yard drive, and that time the Bengal Tigers went 70 yards. Amazing thing, it's pretty much error-free. Not too many penalties. One fumble. First down, 10 Gators from their own 20-yard line. Hampton in motion. Off John L. Williams breaking tackles, but good pursuit by LSU to make up for the missed tackle. Jeffrey Dale will get credit for that tackle. Number four, the strong safety senior from Winfield, Louisiana. Brownlee did an excellent job on that play, and the nose man, Henry Thomas. Brownlee's all SEC and really the most consistent performer on that offensive line. Now the Gators have split two receivers to the right side, one to the left side. Second down eight from their own 22. Irwin Bell, very successful afternoon so far. Almost picked off. Nice play by 12, Norman Jefferson. Pass intended for number seven, Lorenzo Hampton. 
This is basically the same pattern that they were getting to from the motion, swinging a man out wide on the strong side. But Bell is looking weak side all the way here. The field was wide open. The middle of the field was wide open. If Hampton would have taken the middle of the field at full speed, I think he could have run by Norman Jefferson. Jefferson's got to get himself a little depth. Third down eight, Gators. Same formation this time. Bell. It's complete to Ray McDonald at the 32-yard line and a first down. Another big catch by McDonald. He caught a touchdown pass for 43 yards earlier and now a crucial third down, first down pass reception by Ray McDonald. Ray McDonald waits for Lorenzo Hampton to clear out the zone and that comes underneath. The people that are making Bell so effective is that offensive line, Zimmerman and Kerr and Henson and Brown. Brown. They're just giving him, he's not har harassed at all. But Donald now two catches for 52 yards. Bell is six out of eight for 100 yards. Penalty marker down, could be uh, movement over on the left side. Lomas Brown, number 75, looked to be making some motion on the left side. Offsides is the call against the Florida Gators. I was talking to George Young before the game, the general manager for the New York Giants, and he feels that that's one of the highest rated linemen in the country, Lomas Brown, in the top five. Charlie Pell. It's two and three versus LSU, 83 and 42 in his coaching career. Clemson. Then at the University of Florida, Hampton in motion on a first and 15. That's John L. Williams back to the original line of scrimmage right near the 31-32 yard line. Number 57, Sean Burks with the tackle for LSU. 14 to 7 the score. Florida leading the Bengal Tigers with 9.58 to go in the first half. This is Bob Neal and Tim Foley happy to be bringing you Southeastern Conference football. Hope you'll be able to be with us all season long. We have some great SEC football. And what a tradition this conference has. Most people in the country would agree it is the strongest conference in the United States. Second down 10 from the 31. Hampton in motion. Bell under pressure. Down he goes at the 23-94. Mike Brooks came in unmolested from the right defensive side. He slid Mike Brooks' slides right under the tight end here. Bell running the flood pattern to the strong side, but he's looking weak side, and here comes Brooks. He gets a whole handful of them, and Kerwin feels like he roughed him up a little bit, and kind of looked like he wasn't real friendly there. Bell took some real shots last week, and he just popped right up. He's a gutty competitor, especially for a quarterback. Bell's tall, but slight of build. He's 6'3", 185. Third down 20 now. Pro set formation for the Gators. Odom in motion. Good pass protection this time. Almost picked off, incomplete. The man closest to the ball, interception-wise, was 57, Sean Burks, the linebacker. I would have thought it would be impossible to throw the ball into that group without somebody catching it. There were 10 people within touching distance of that football. And it's going to be a punting situation for Florida. Chriswell is the punter. He is the long punter. Florida has two punters. They're both fine. Chris Wolf for the long distance. Dave Nardoni for the short pooch kicks. High snap. Good job of receiving it. Chris Wolf had a nice punt. Norman Jefferson fair catches it. They're going to mark it at about the 28-yard line. Very nice punt by Ray Criswell. Florida with a history of great punters. They have a couple on the team right now. Florida 14, LSU 7, 831 to go first half. This is Turner Network Television. Stay with us at halftime. We'll have a feature on the SEC Player of the Week, a running back from Tennessee who got 200 yards last week, and we'll be seeing the Florida football marching band. Here's Gary James breaking tackles to get a little bit of yardage where there was previously none. Nice job by Gary James. That's the kind of run that got Florida down there, or that got LSU down there knocking on the door for that touchdown earlier. He did a nice job not losing five yards on that particular play. Adrian White has made a nice read and is up in there harassing him. Second down, about six. 
Wickersham, plenty of time. Hits Gary James. James, eluding one tackler across the 40 for the first down for LSU. LSU, after that last drive, seems to be gaining some confidence with this new Arnsparger offense, which is quite different than the offensive scheme that was played under Stovall last year at LSU. And I think you have it, even though it's the same number and the same fella out there in Wickersham, you have a new quarterback. And he's patient. He's going to kind of assume the personality of Arnsbar a little bit. And he'll take that five and six yards where some quarterbacks can't stand it. They want to get it deep. First down 10. Wickersham to go to the air. Over the middle. It's complete. That's the tight end, Mitch Andrews. He gets near the 50. About the 49-yard line. Andrews' fourth catch on the day now. And as you said at the beginning of this football game, Tim Foley, Andrews is a key in that LSU offensive attack. You're going to see Tommy Campbell here going against Ricky Williams. Campbell doing an admirable job keeping him out of there getting a little help from Kevin Langford but that's the matchup that's important and now it's Garland Jean-Baptiste and Rathjen in the backfield for LSU Sam Garland making the tackle of Garland Jean-Baptiste if you can keep up with that Jean-Baptiste number 43 a sophomore from St. Martinville Louisiana one of the rare times you'll see both James and Hilliard out of that LSU backfield. There's Jean-Baptiste now. He is six feet tall, 220 pounds. One of the things that Arnsbarger remarked about is the unselfishness of both Gary James and Dalton Hilliard. They were enthusiastic blockers for the other ball carrier when they had the ball. First down 10 LSU inside Gator territory now. And off to Jean-Baptiste. A nice spinning move to get a little more yardage than he was due at first. Close to the 40, marking down at the 42, Alonzo Johnson with a tackle. 6.33 to go first half, Florida 14, LSU 7. From Gainesville, Florida at Florida Field. A sea of orange out there, except when you're looking at the LSU cheerleaders. <laughs> Charlie Pell. That's Rathjen down to the 30-yard line. First down, LSU, Alonzo Johnson, the tackle. Everybody's involved in this LSU offense. Everybody that's not an offensive lineman can catch the ball for LSU. And if you're a Florida supporter, you might be asking, why don't they do something about that? Joe Kine said he was going to try to keep it simple, try to force them to drive the ball all the way down the field. And that's what they're doing right here. The idea is when they catch the ball, come up and smack them. Eight LSU players have caught passes in this game already. Penalty marker on the play. It was a first down 10 from the 30. As a defensive coordinator, that's exactly what you're betting on. That sometime during an 80-yard drive, the offense is going to mess up. Okay. And they're going to put them in a must-throw situation. And that's when it's fun to play pass defense. Here's Joe Hicks, our referee. <laughs> Bill Arnsparger who likes that mistake-free football, but of course, what coach doesn't? First down 15 LSU now from the 35. Wickersham to go to the air. And he finds Mitch Andrews again. Short gain, only about three or four yards past the original line of scrimmage, down to the 28-yard line, and that's the fifth catch of the day for Mitch Andrews, the junior from Homa, Louisiana. Nice little seven-yard gain. Get you back into a pass-run situation. You don't want the defense to be able to dictate whether you must throw or run the football. Second down, eight from the 28-and-a-half. Three wideouts in there. That's Montano in motion. Handoff goes to Jean-Baptiste. The Gator defense is ready. Nothing up the middle that time. They were trying to move the middle guard, the nose guard, Ricky Williams, number 52. Not much is lost when Williams comes in and Newton goes out. Alonzo Johnson, 6'4 and dangerous. Coming down the line, gets there right about the same time as Ricky Williams. Williams is 285 pounds, six feet tall. It's third down six. Pass is complete to Hilliard for the first down. Inside the 20, near the 15-yard line. Adrian White with a tackle. What a deceptive player is Dalton Hilliard. Diminuted. However, he's able to drive for extra yardage even after making the first down reception. Second on the team in pass receiving last year. Wickersham's been well trained. Settles back in there. He almost looked bored. He's so relaxed. Delivers a ball to Hilliard on time. And look at that guy scrap. Wickersham, 15 out of 17 for 117 yards and one TD. First down 10 from the 16. Handoff Hilliard. 
Hilliard loses his footing and goes down at the 15. Gain of about a yard on the play. Tommy Duhart will get credit for the tackle. Duhart, the left defensive tackle, a redshirt freshman. Now, if you're Joe Kynes, the defensive coordinator, you're thinking about applying a little bit more pressure. You're thinking about locking up man-to-man. -man. You're not going to give them that little dump anymore. You're going to take advantage of the fact that they can't run too deep. They're on the 15-yard line. You're going to come after them. Let's watch this Florida defense this time on second down nine from the 15. That's Gary James fumbles the ball. He falls on it back at the 28-yard line. Tim Foley, it was popped loose by Mark Corp because of the pressure of which you were speaking. Uh, Joe Kynes must have been thinking the same thing I was. But uh, that's exactly what happened. Both linebackers coming in underneath, and they caught him in a trick play. See Corp coming there? And even Adrian White, the safety, is coming, breaking through. We don't call you Coach Foley just to be blowing our horns. Well, it always is helpful to spend some time with these brilliant football minds that are assistant coaches at these major schools before the game. Third down, 22 for LSU now. Wickersham, all day to throw, complete to James. He can get no further than the 19-yard line. We're going to have a field goal attempt coming up here. Juan Batanzos, the kicker, missed a 47-yarder earlier. This will be a 46-yarder, I believe. Make that a 36-yard field goal. You'll be kicking it from the left hash mark at the 26-yard line. So a 36-yard attempt. The wind is brisk, about 20 miles an hour, but it swirls on the field. No way to know what kind of effect it will have. Let's watch it. Gators 14, LSU 7. It's good. A 36-yarder by Juan Batanzos, a senior from Mexico City, Mexico. And we have ourselves a 14-10 ball game with two minutes, 29 seconds remaining in the first half from Florida Field in Gainesville. with the ball against Syracuse. That's quarterback Frank Reich back to pass, looking for Greg Hill. Hill, the leading receiver in Maryland history, grabs the ball, finds the end zone. Maryland leads Syracuse 7-0. We'll have more scores in halftime. And highlights at halftime, now back to Bob and Tim. Ready for the kickoff now. It's 14-10, Florida leading LSU. Sunshine peeking through the partly cloudy skies. Temperature around 80 degrees. A nice breeze here in Gainesville, Florida. Beautiful afternoon. The 1984 Southeastern Conference opener for the Bengal Tigers and for Florida. And just before the kickoff of Matt DeFrank, the wind that we were speaking of earlier blows the ball off the tee. It's brisk and it comes and goes. As you can see, the fraternity houses in the background here on the Florida campus and the wind whipping against that large American flag. If the wind keeps picking up at the rate it's picked up, it's going to be a definite factor. It's not as bad as the flag make it, makes it look on the field, but it's starting to get worse. Ball goes down and stops in the end zone. There's no penalty on that play, as I understand it, unless it goes out of the end zone on the fly. There is a penalty marker down, however, at about the 15-yard line. I think the officials are waving off the flag. The ruling on that is that the ball must go out of the end zone on the fly before it's brought out to the 30-yard line. The officials earlier ruled a penalty against Florida when they kicked the ball into the end zone and out, out of bounds, which should not have been a penalty. Now they're discussing it again. We'll see what the call is momentarily. In the meantime, a reminder at halftime, we'll be joining Craig Sager and Paul Hornick for the Football Action Report at our studios. We'll also be covering the University of Florida Marching Band, a wonderful musical aggregation, one of the finest in the country. We'll have a highlight feature on our SEC Player of the Week, which will be a weekly player. This week, we'll be looking at Johnny Jones from the University of Tennessee, who had more than 200 yards rushing last week for the Volunteers against Washington State. Volunteers coming up on our schedule just three weeks from now versus Auburn. Now they've sorted out why the penalty marker was placed on the field. I think they've sorted it out. We'll be getting an announcement from Joe Hicks, the referee. More complicated than the courtrooms. This thing, all the balls in the air, 15 yard penalty, and a new kick. Clipping while the ball was in the air, 15 yard penalty, and a new kick. There's a scoring drive, 54 yards, 13 plays. 
LSU looked like they were going to take it in the end zone for a touchdown, but thanks to a penalty that set them back a little bit, and as Tim Foley was predicting, some, uh, some very good pressure from Florida, LSU had to settle for the 35-yard field goal. Another thing to consider when you decide that you want to blitz LSU is that Wickersham has seen that before, and he can recognize it. If he sees it coming, the, you're going to be working against the odds if you're going to try to cover Fontenot and Andrews and Martin man-to-man. -man. You're just going to hurt yourself. You're playing into their hands if you do that. Now, thanks to that penalty, LSU is kicking off from the 45-yard line of Florida. There comes the Florida wave at Gainesville. Now, we were about to say because of the penalty at the 45-yard line, LSU will kick off. There's a, an advantage here for LSU, but not really because you can't kick it out of the end zone anyway. Watch for an onside kick. Possibly. Nearly a squib kick. Into the end zone. It'll be a touchback for Florida. With the ball number five, Eric Anderson. Florida will bring it out to the 20 after all of that. By the way, you saw the sea of orange in the stands here at Florida Field. 72,000 folks here, 4,500 of whom are LSU Bengal Tiger fans who've made the trek from Baton Rouge. Two quarterbacks have been highly effective today. 126 yards for Wickersham, 100 yards for Bell. 43 of the 100 for Bell came on the TD pass. off to Neil Anderson to the 22-yard line. Down he goes. 72, Carl Wilson, the defensive right end with the stop for LSU. Neil Anderson is really an involved in community life, Bob, here. He's uh, in the student senate and involved with the uh, FCA here. He just does a lot of different things besides being a great running back. And this Florida wave from the stands is really something else. We'll show you another picture of that in a little while. When the wave gets over to LSU, it always stops. <laughs> Second down eight, Florida from the 22. Bell, plenty of time to throw. Odom is hit, drops the ball, fallen on by Williams. They're saying he did not have possession. Incomplete pass, and it was number seven, Steve Rehaj, a sophomore from Metairie, Louisiana, who put that lick on. Rehaj is a Tim Foley kind of player. He plays all over the field, uses his head, and will knock you into next week. I, I think he's a little bit faster than I am. Again, he sat back, didn't let Bell throw that slant in pattern, and came up and put his face mask in the chest of the receiver as he caught the ball. A minute 47 left. In the first half of play, 14-10, Gators over LSU. Florida ball, third down eight. Conversion situation. Off the 22-yard line of Florida. Bell, quick toss. Not much on that. He throws it out to Gary Roll, the flanker on the right side, number 86. Gain of about five. Clock has stopped. Since it was short of the first, uh, short of the first down, it'll be a punting situation once again for Florida. And number 13, Ray Criswell, the long punter, comes in. And they're going to take a commercial timeout. We'll be right back to Florida Field. This is Turner Network Television. Before the Representative from the great state of Louisiana amidst the sea of orange, the Bengal Tigers, 4,500 fans here at Florida Field. Fourth down five, punting situation. Criswell will take the snap at about his own 10. Like a cannon shot. This is Jefferson. To the 33-yard line, LSU ball with a minute 28 remaining. A 50-yard punt by Criswell. He had a 51-yarder earlier. Ray Criswell does the long punting for Florida. The short punting is done by Dave Nardoni. Florida has two kickers and two punters. So LSU trailing 14 to 10 has a minute 28 to try to get something else on the board here before halftime. Hilliard twisting his way across the 40 yard line. Game about five or six. Patrick Miller, number 98, with a stop for Florida. 
Hurry up offense. Second down two. Wickersham gets a good block. Plenty of time. Setting up a screen. Hits James. Well played by Florida. Back there to make the play. Number 93, Alonzo Johnson. His fifth tackle of this first half. And was he the man on the spot? Alonzo Johnson, a very heady play. He read this screen coming. On this particular instance, Jeff Wickersham fakes a pass down the field. All the time, he's going out to the screen. Now, the screen is covered. Now's the time he just throw it over his head. Let it end up on the sideline someplace. And here comes Timmy Newton chasing him down. And Jeff bounces a little bit. Well, that's dangerous when those lines will roll up on your leg. Stay healthy, Jeff. 285 pounds of Tim Newton up on Wickersham's left thigh. There's Roger Sibold coming into the football game. He is the strong safety. Was in the quarterback race here at one time earlier this fall for Florida. He's talking to Dan Coughlin there on the sidelines. Dan is a high school coach in Coral Gables down there with uh, Joe Injichuk and Nick Cody's and Jack McCluskey. A lot of Florida players on this Florida University football team. Sibleden is a fifth defensive back, but he really kind of plays the position of a linebacker when he goes in there. Third down, 14 LSU. 52 seconds to go in the half. Wickersham going along. Nobody's down there, but Florida, number eight, Ricky Eason, intercepts at the 25. Gator ball at the 25-yard line of Florida. 46 seconds remaining in the half. Pass intended for Martin. Wickersham got it in the air. Tim, I have to believe that the ball possibly got caught in this very brisk 20 to 30 mile an hour wind. Something else happened. All those receivers were jammed at the line of scrimmage. That Florida secondary is well coached. Positioned their bodies in front of the receivers, jammed them, and Jeff Wickersham expected those folks to be farther down the field than they ended up. Great sideline shot of that interception. Our Turner sports camera. It'll be first down 10, Florida, from the 26-yard line. Two receivers right, one left. Bell in the pocket. It's complete to number 89, Ricky Natil, out to the 37-yard line, first down. 38 seconds remaining in the first half of play. Florida leading 14 to 10. Clock stops just long enough to set the ball and move the sticks and the chain on the far sideline. Teal reminds me of former Florida receiver Nat Moore, the way he moves, very heady receiver. First down, 10 Gators, and they jump before the snap, and that'll be a five-yard penalty. Lomas Brown, Billy Henson both jumped up. Penalty marker goes down. That'll set them back five yards. Eight seconds lost on the clock, thanks to that miscue. So 30 seconds remaining in the first half. It'll still be first and 10, but the ball goes back to the 32. Close by the offensive team. Five yards offside show you what kind of a guy Natil is. He asked to room with Dwayne Dixon last year, the outstanding Florida receiver. He figured that Dwayne knew some things that he wanted to know, and he wanted to spend as much time with him as he could. First and 15, Gators, from their own 31-yard line. 30 seconds to go in the half. This is Hampton. Out of bounds to the 36-yard line. Clock stops with 23 seconds in the half. Hampton's second carry of the day, only nine yards. Kerwin Bell, on the other hand, has been pretty active as the quarterback. He is 8 out of 12 for 114 yards and one touchdown. Second game ever as a collegiate player, freshman from Mayo, Florida. They call him the throwing Mayoan, I understand. <laughs> they have to, in Mayo, they have to go into Perry for excitement. There's only 1,000 people in Perry. <laughs> Second down, 11 from the 36 for Florida. 23 seconds to go in the half. Plenty of time. Bell completes that pass here to the 45-yard line to Ray McDonald, covered by Norman Jefferson. McDonald caught the 43-yard Florida touchdown pass earlier. Here's Ray McDonald looking to move to the inside. Bends it back to the outside. All this time now, pass defense is a combination of coverage and pressure. In that time, there wasn't much pressure. Bell stands there and waits for McDonald to make his move to the outside, and Bell has the ability to deliver the ball in a hurry. McDonald, by the way, has 71 yards receiving on three catches. Bell's adding up the yardage here. Florida still has an opportunity to get down in field goal range. 12 seconds to go in the half, and Kerwin Bell is going to call timeout because there's probably time for 
two more plays, a play to perhaps get the ball down inside the 30 to go for a field goal, and then maybe a field goal time. So Kerwin is trying to get a timeout here with 12 seconds left. Galen Hall has done a remarkable job with Kerwin Bell, Hall, the offensive coordinator. He found himself on Wednesday before their first game with a quarterback that had never taken a snap in a major college football game. And I guess Wednesday, Wednesday night, they, they went in and grabbed a projector, and they just spent a lot of time together. Bill Arnsbarger obviously upset. The official coming from the far sideline, he had had a conversation with Arnsbarger, which really set him off. And Joe Hicks, the referee, now back here on the near sideline, coming over to talk to Pell. The officials, frankly, have had a rough time in this first half. It is their first SEC game of the year. Been some confusion. Now he had a word or two to say to the Florida coaches. Now back out there, Orange Barger is still upset. Now the referee is granting the timeout to Florida after all of that. So with 12 seconds left in the half, the referee finishing his conversation on the sidelines. <laughs> And Arn Sparger is talking to number 57, Sean Burks, his defensive captain. I'm sure saying, go on out there and say this and this and this. <laughs> There's Charlie Pell. Arn Sparger's communicated with you a lot during the games, Tim. Right, sometimes he was a little excited when he was talking to me, too, <laughs> and asked me what I was doing. No word yet from the officials on what all this hubbub is about down there on the field. The game situation is pretty simple. 12 seconds to go in the first half. Gators lead the Bengal Tigers 14 to 10. It is going to be Florida ball. First down 10 at the 45-yard line of LSU. Sure, they're talking about why they didn't start the clock or why they didn't charge him with a timeout, one or the other. Yeah, Pell wants four more seconds added to the clock, we understand from our folks on the sideline. I'm sure he'd take more than that if they would give it to him. I don't believe they're going to get it to him. They may. We'll have to see if the clock starts. They may hold it for four seconds, which would in effect give Florida four more, which is probably what made Arn Sparger angry. Yes, they are holding the clock, giving them the extra four. Pretty nice job of running the ball to the 33-yard line. He got the first down, clocked down to five seconds. It would be a 50-yard field goal attempt against the wind. Now, Florida does have a long field goal kicker. Let's see if they're going to do that. That man would be Chris Perkins, who also kicks off number 16. He is going into the football game right now. Interesting situation when you have the long kicker and the short kicker. That time LSU rushed three people, and... One of the disadvantages and liabilities of a three-man rush is obviously there are more holes in it if the quarterback can't find someone open and scramble, as Kerwin Bell did successfully on that play. Last year, Perkins had a 53-yarder against Miami. This one will be exactly a 50-yarder from the near side hash mark. So he does have the leg. The wind is brisk, however, at roughly 20 miles an hour, and it is blowing into the face of the Florida kicker. Now, watch this setup. This sometimes can be an unusual play here. They lined everybody up on the offensive line to the left side, just now shifting to the regular line of the scrimmage. Number 13, Ray Criswell, will hold. As the distance. It's wide to the right side. No good. And as the clock runs down to double zero, the first half is history. Florida 14, LSU 10. We're at Florida Field in Gainesville. Stay with us. We have an exciting halftime coming your way. This is Turner Network Television. the score at halftime Florida 14 LSU 10 season opener for both these schools in Florida field a critical game for both programs it goes without saying first of all they don't play any other SEC teams for a while uh, and the winner and the loser here is going to have to live with a victory or the loss for a while there are the stats in the first half pretty even as you look down through there uh, rushing and passing turnovers are against LSU and that could be why they're trailing in the game as a matter of fact time of possession though heavily in favor of LSU nearly 20 minutes of control of the football and that's what you like to see if you're on defense you, the best form of defense is let your offense have the football and LSU's offense has done a good job 
And the kickoff comes down into the end zone to Roger Sibbald, and the Florida Gators will bring it out after the touchback to the 20-yard line. Where it'll be first down 10 Florida. Hope you enjoyed our halftime activities. The Florida Band, our feature player of the week, and the report from our Action Center with Craig Sager and Paul Horning out of our studios. And the temperature on the field, we're talking about the temperature being around 80 degrees. That is the airport temperature. As you can see with this artificial surface, the temperature about 94 degrees field level. Enough to work up some perspiration. First down 10 Gators from their own 20. Hampton in motion. This is John L. Williams to the 23-yard line. Come out basically with the same look, Bob, that motion to flood. Celebrity time up here at halftime. We had Hank Williams Jr. up here and Governor Bob Graham, the governor of Florida. This is quite the event in Gainesville. Of course, every campus has quite the event in the Southeastern Conference when they have a home football game. I mean, it is the party of the weekend. All you've seen around Gainesville the last couple of days are beat LSU stickers. Matter of fact, our hotel here in Gainesville was the LSU headquarters, so we got to see a lot of beat Gator stickers in our hotel. Here's Hampton on the second down, close to the first down at the 29-yard line. Number 94, Mike Brooks, came over from his weak linebacker position to make the stop, the initial hit for the LSU Bengal Tigers. The amazing thing is to watch the way this Florida offensive line moves, as big as they are. There you see number 74, Jeff Zimmerman. I mean, that, that guy's got to have some Philistine in his background. I know he's related to Goliath. He's 6'3", weighs 308 pounds before dinner, but yet he moves real well. He hails from Orlando. The population drops by one half when he comes to school in the fall. Here's Hampton on the first down run, out. breaks it outside. He has excellent speed. of the Florida Gators at the 45-yard line of LSU. Lifford Hubley with the tackle. A 16-yard gain. Hampton really hasn't handled the ball much in this game. You see John L. Williams, Zimmerman takes out two people. Who is that leading away? John L. Williams maintains his footing and keeps going up the field. Hobley tears the ball out. Almost a turnover, but Florida comes up with it. That was an All-American type performance by Hobley. He was blocked out of the play, overcame that, still made the tackle, and almost caused a fumble. First down, 10. Florida, quick toss, right side. For about seven or eight yards, Ricky Mateel, the receiver, number 89. And Florida has gone from their 20 to the 36 and a half yard line of LSU in just a couple of minutes here in the second half. One thing you have to watch for from Natiel is that he also throws the football. In the fourth quarter of the Hurricane game last week, Lorenzo Hampton threw a pass, and so did Ricky Natiel. I used to point out that a lot of these football players were high school quarterbacks, and I learned that almost all of them at one time or another were quarterbacks. They're such good athletes. Second down two, Florida. John L. Williams. Penalty marker down. Williams gets the first down to the 31-yard line, but a yellow marker is on the field. And it was um, thrown at a Florida player. So you might anticipate a penalty against the Gators here. John L. Williams has performed magnificently in this game, both blocking, running the ball, and it looks like a complete player. They have a real nice scheme for him, too, Bob, with Anderson or Hampton leading the way. They can't get any quick contain on that toss. And that's the thing that usually turns the play back in right away. The safety cannot attack because he, he's got to be concerned about that man getting outside of him. You can get used to the hands. Offense. Five-yard penalty. There's the call against the Florida Gators. So they move the ball back to the 41-yard line, where it will now be second down again. This time, second down seven. Ray McDonald, Frankie Neal are the receivers for Florida, along with Walter Odom, the tight end. Backs are Hampton and Williams. Bell, quick toss left side. Incomplete intended for Odom at the 40. They're just using different formations to get to the same look. Walter Odom, a sophomore tight end. He's from American High School down in Miami. And Kerwin Bell has the same read. Look at the strong safety. If the strong safety hangs in the slot, deliver the ball in the flat as he did there. Just overthrew it a tad. Speaking of talent, Florida provides as good a football talent as any state in the union. Almost all of the Gators are from Florida, and nine of the players for LSU are from the state of Florida. It'll be third down and a long six. Kerwin Bell. 
under pressure incomplete falls harmlessly down about the 28 yard line very good pressure on Bell that time by Mike Brooks number 94 Brooks is the man who had the sack earlier he is the quick pass rushing pressure player for the LSU defensive alignment and Florida fails to convert on that first down following the penalty and now they will punt and when they're inside or near the 40 yard line of the opponents the punter becomes Dave Nardoni who is a senior from Andover Maryland he has virtually perfected what they call the pooch kick dropping it down inside the 10 let's see how it does it is going to be down at the one down at about the one foot line see how well he did I want to tell you he made a great punt unusually however an LSU player picked up that ball there to down it uh, what happened on that that's Slifford Hobley uh, excuse me coming off the field I think that's Hobley We'll check exactly what happened in a moment. At any rate, LSU has their backs to the wall after the 41-yard punt. We'll be back at Florida Field. Stay with us. Tim Foley, would you call this a mental error by Lifford Hobley on this punt? I don't think there's any question. Right here, he's trying to make a decision as to what to do. Now, the ball stays up in the air too long, and he has just the temporary loss of power to the brain. I'm sure if he had to do it over again, he'd just let it go into the end zone. But occasionally, that'll happen to a player. He'll do something that he can never explain afterwards. Well, this is a critical mistake for LSU. Lined up entirely in the backfield. They just have to run it out here at about the two or three yard line. Gators 14, LSU 10. We talk about those. A lot of people think it's a waste for a team to have two punters and two kickers. But when you watch Criswell hit the ball, punting it 50, 51 yards when they need a long one, then you see Dave Nardoni come in and drop the ball down there on the one yard line. And it was bouncing back in. That ball would have been downed inside the five, whether Hopley hit it or not. I think um, I agree. There's no question about that. This is also a home run ball time. Not from this formation, but on third down, we're going to throw it out of here. This is Gary James on second down nine. He drives out to about the seven yard line. Line of scrimmage was inside the one to begin this series. So it'll be third down and a very difficult three and a half yards to go for LSU. They trail in the game, 14-10, 11-02 remaining in the third quarter of play. This is Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you from Florida Field in Gainesville. We watched Herman Fontenot last year catch about a 40-yarder that Wickersham threw out of his own end zone. This is close enough here where they may have a chance to make it, though. Gary James driving. He does not get the first down. He gets to the nine-yard line. Needed to go right up against the 10 to get it. The Florida defense holds down there, and that, that mistake by Hobley proves to be very large. Gary James limping a bit, holding his right hamstring. Looks to be okay, though, as he leaves the field. And now a difficult punting situation for Clay Parker. Yeah, we don't want to make Mrs. Hobley unduly upset. As you mentioned, that ball probably would have been downed anyway on the five. It was starting to bounce the other way. I think more credit needs to go to the punter in that situation, right. Dave Nardoni, than any kind of mistake on the part of LSU. Tim Foley, I would agree with you. There's Clay Parker, number one. Averaged about 40 yards a punt in 1983 for LSU. Almost blocked. Here is Nateel. Down at the 37-yard line. The Florida Gators with the lead have outstanding field position. Flag on the play. It's a flag on the play, Bob. There is a penalty marker in the end zone from which the punt was hit, and it may be against Florida. Hold it a second. The LSU players are indicating that. And it could be against number 71, Garland. Sam Garland may be the man who roughed the punter. If it did, it'll be new life for LSU. Now, there's two calls here. It can be roughing with one penalty or running into the kicker for another. Either way, it is a first down. I think they're going to call running into the kicker, but it doesn't matter as far as the possession is concerned. It will be LSU ball. Five-yard penalty for running into the kicker. It was set. Watch for number 71, Tim. See if that's the guilty party here. Ball come back. Good penetration right up the gut. And here comes Garland. Just a little bit too close. I didn't mean to do it. <laughs> they threw the flag. They saw you, Sam. Good call on the part of the officials. Hilliard struggles out to about the 16-yard line. It's first and 10 from the 14. Give him a yard and a half. Alonzo Johnson with the tackle. 
there were two critical turns there. The ball going down about the one-yard line, LSU failing to get the first down. Then the running into the kicker to give the Bengal Tigers new life. Receivers are Fontenot number 40 and Martin number 41. They split wide left and right. Running backs now are Rathjen and Dalton Hillier. Second down eight. Penalty marker down, to, uh, illegal procedure called against LSU. These two teams are tightening up a bit here in the third quarter. They played pretty loose and moved the ball relatively mistake-free, but now all of a sudden a rash yeah, of illegal mistakes. Illegal procedure on the offensive team, second down. Back to the 10-yard line. 9.07 to go, quarter number three. Spark no in motion. Martin with the catch, out to the 25-yard line, first down LSU. Vernell Brown made the tackle for Eric Martin, his fourth catch of the day. Back up, back up. You love to give credit to a wide receiver that'll stretch out coming to the inside. There are some guys that played wide receiver that think that between the hash marks to the inside is out of bounds. They don't have a lot of courage. Martin's not one of those folks. He sticks his nose in there. Three wide outs for LSU now on a first down 10 from the 25. And there's going to be another procedure call. You notice Fontenot was in motion to the right side, turned to come to the left side, and that's what the motion penalty is all about, Tim Foley. Two shifts. You do see that play a lot in the what's called the H-back offense in the pros, where you put a man in motion one way, stops, Illegal comes procedure back. Procedure offense, five yards, still first down. And cracks into the line. That's correct. However, if he stops, then moves again without that one second before the snap, going to get the illegal motion penalty. There is a summary of the penalties. Five for 40 for Florida. Three for 15 for LSU. Two of them in the last couple of minutes. On the first down, 15. Hilliard to the 23-yard line. He needs to get all the way to the 35 for the first down. Tripped up by nose guard Tim Newton. And, uh, Tim Foley, at the beginning of the game, we talked about the battles between the nose guard, Tim Newton for Florida, and Tommy Campbell, the center for LSU. And that's proving to be quite a lot of action on that side of the ball. How so far do you think that's gone in terms of the way the battle is? Well, when they're giving him the help from Rastian or a guard coming down, Campbell's able to handle his own. I don't think there's a center in the country that can handle, handle Newton man-to-man. -man. Second down, 12, LSU from the 23. Double-teaming Newton this time. Going long. There's Martin. Double covered. Incomplete at the 30-yard line. Jarvis Williams. And Vernell Brown, excellent double coverage on the All-American wide receiver, Eric Martin. You knew they had to come back to this sooner or later. This is the first time in just a regular situation they've tried to get the ball down the field to Martin. Williams and Brown, both right there, play the ball so well. It, but that's, Martin's the type of receiver. You know, watch this. Timmy Newton coming in on... Working against the right guard, Kevin Langford, and they're keeping him right on the line of scrimmage. That can't do any better than that. Three guys, Gore, Campbell, and Langford working on Newton that time. Third down, 12. Rickersham gets it away, but is leveled as he throws the ball. Outstanding pressure down there. And the Florida, the Florida defense was back in on him. Number two, Adrian White supplied the pressure on a blitz from strong safety. It's the same blitz that they used to break up the reverse when LSU was driving earlier. You'll see both of them coming through the inside, and he's make, he makes contact as Wickersham lets go of the ball. Again, a risk for the Florida defense pays off. And Wickersham also ran into Rathjen, partially probably because of that pressure. Oh, problems for Parker. He gets it away. He gets knocked down, but I believe there was contact made with the ball. No penalty marker. And now Florida gets the ball at their own 38-yard line. Ironically, that's where Florida would have had it had there not been a penalty against Florida on running into the kicker on the last LSU possession. This time they ran into Parker, too, but the ball was touched. If you touch that ball, you can hit the kicker. Not that bad a snap. Not that bad a snap. Handleable. He gets the ball away. You can hit the kicker after he breaks his normal motion. And he did, in fact. 7.35 to go, third quarter. This is Turner Network Television.
Good job. You can tell we're back in Florida. Sea breezes blowing here at inland Gainesville. Brisk, thunderstorm-like looking day. However, it's partly cloudy, very pleasant temperatures. It is 14 to 10, Florida leading. LSU, 735 to go in the third quarter. Ray McDonald just came into the game for Gary Roll. Ray is the guy that can fly. He's number nine, split wide to the left for the Gators. Bell to McDonald. Out of bounds at the 31-yard line. About three yards short of a first down. James Pearson, a freshman, playing that corner over there where Norman Jefferson had been playing for LSU. They have James Pearson, who's in there right now for Jefferson. Jefferson's been having his problems at that cornerback. That was a check off by Kerwin Bell. Both backs stayed in the block. Just a little quick hitch. Get the ball to the wide receiver. See if he can break a tackle and go. On a second down three. A little bit of running room for Neil Anderson. He gets the first down to about the 27-yard line of LSU. This is a very important possession for both Florida and LSU. Florida indefinite. They've got to come away here. They're looking at it, I'm sure, offensively with some kind of points. Obviously, they always want the touchdown. But if you get the ball and start at your own 38-yard line, you've got to come up with at least three. Bill Arnsbarger reviewing his notes. He's played this game in his head just like all head coaches have several times before the game actually starts. He's just reviewing his notes. First down 10, Florida at the 27 of LSU. Henderson in motion. Pitch to Joe Henderson. Henderson to the 21-yard line. Boy, well, helmets are flying down there. That line of scrimmage. When the Florida Gators come off of that ball, you talk about momentum. How many pounds do they have down there? It must be 1,500 to 2,000. <laughs> Unbelievable. You talk about weight displacement. During fall practice, Jeff Zimmerman jumped off the 10-meter board. It took him an hour and a half to fill the pool back up again. <laughs> Now, why do I not believe that? Second down for Florida. They're at the 21. Pressure. Bell gets it away. Complete to Henderson. Down at the 12-yard line. Rick Chapman with a tackle for LSU. 39, Joe Henderson. The fullback, who is the backup to John L. Williams, comes in here and makes his presence felt early. What a stable of running backs. Anderson, Hampton, Massey, Williams, Henderson. Most of them are real good receivers, too, Bob. They can hurt you both ways. Tough situation for Florida here. It is first down 10 from the 11 and a half. Florida can get a first down inside the one and a half yard line. Difficult scoring area here. Not much passing room. Little confusion. They call timeout. timeout Florida. Kerwin Bell, the youngster who's, I think, played an excellent game. Matter of fact, I thought he held himself up very well in the middle of that game against Miami last week. A little bit of a rough start and a little bit of a tough time in the two-minute drill toward the end, even though he threw that touchdown pass for 41 seconds. And here he's played with poise. We'll be back in a moment. Gators leading 14 to 10. Update the college football today. Georgia and Southern, Mich uh, Southern Mississippi tied 3-3. That's in the first quarter in Athens, Georgia. And Miami trailing Michigan 6 to nothing in Ann Arbor. Three Miami turnovers. Bernie Kosar has been intercepted once and has fumbled once in that game for Miami. Michigan leads 6 0. Well, Kerwin Bell came over and consulted with Mike Heimerdinger, who's on, he's a receiver coach for Florida, on the phones down there. Let's see what their brain trust came up with. LSU's got to get some pressure. First and 10 from the 11 yard line. Odom in motion. Neil Anderson spinning stopped at the line of scrimmage good pursuit by the LSU defensive front Clarence Osborne number 95 leading the way from the left side that'll be second down 10 from virtually the same spot that time LSU blitzed and they've got immediate upfield penetration which turned that play back into pursuit that play has been able to develop too long and they've been able to find some openings along the line of scrimmage the teal splits wide to the right side, roll to the left side. Tight end is lined up on the left side also. Play fake, Bell. It's picked off by number four, Jeffrey Dale, intercepted in the end zone by LSU. Bell rolled right and threw into coverage. Interception, Bengal Tigers. The score remains 14-10. The ball will come out to the 20-yard line. 
This is the same pass they've worked effectively three times already tonight, today, but you have to deliver this ball early. It's either the back in the flat now or the split end now. He waits too long. The man that eventually makes the interception is the strong safety who came all the way from the other side. You gotta get rid of this ball in a hurry. You either have it now or you don't. The longer you hold it, the more chance of an interception you face. That was Dale's sixth career interception. Wickersham comes out throwing complete to Fontenot. Out to the 28-yard line. Gain of eight on that pass play to the right side. Herman Fontenot sprained an ankle playing a pickup basketball game before the season started, uh, before fall training camp started. And has been limping all year. He's getting close to being back in shape. That's why Roger McGee has moved ahead of him in the depth chart. Well, you made a significant point earlier, Bob. They got no points out of that possession on their own 38-yard line. Here is Gary James. Picks his way nicely across the 34 to the 35-yard line. Tim Foley, that's something that's impressed me so much about these LSU running backs, the tandem. James and Hilliard, how intelligently they run the ball. They do an excellent job of reading blocks and execution of the blocking pattern. That play was designed, trap designed to go inside, and James, James took it in there. So many running backs lose their blockers. First down 10 from the 35. Here's Wickersham over the middle. It's complete to Martin out at the 45-yard line. Five-yard gain on the first, oh, excuse me, a 10-yard gain, and close to a first down on that first down play. Just depend on where they spot this ball. Eric Martin, by the way, has just become LSU's all-time leader in receiving yardage with 2,002 yards, passing the record that was held by former Tiger Andy Hamilton. 2,002 career yards by that All-American, Eric Martin. He'll rewrite all the receiving record books before this season's over, barring injury. Not much on that first down play. Maybe a half a yard. LSU, though, dodged a bullet as Hilliard was the ball carrier there. LSU dodged a bullet when they gave the ball up to Florida on the Florida 38-yard line. One of the Florida players is down. It's 45 Leon Pennington as they check him over there. But Joe Kynes had mentioned that Pennington had had trouble with his knee from the very first practice of the fall. He twisted his knee, and he was just coming back now to playing form. I'm sure it's disconcerting to Joe to see him, as it is to Leon, to see his knee re-injured. Matter of fact, Leon Pennington had been a force in this game. That was his sixth tackle he was in on on that injury play there. So let's hope that the youngster does not have the twisted knee. He played and started this game in place of Mark Corp, who had been the starter during his twisted knee days. And they're going to have to help him off. Corp is in the game now. But they're fortunate in that they've got three other good linebackers. Mark Corp, there's Joe Kynes right there. That's, that's from up in the booth. He's upstairs. Scott Armstrong who is a transfer who has become a starter for him, and Billy Nelson. Joe Kynes watching one of his premier players, Leon Pennington, being aided off the field. He seems to be putting pressure on the leg. We'll try to update his injury situation. Second down 10 LSU from the 45 now. Here they come. Penalty marker down. Ball was caught out of bounds incomplete. Penalty marker down a lot of pressure. Tim Newton blew right up the middle, as did Korf on that play. Procedure call against LSU. That's three or four procedure penalties that have been called against LSU all in this half. Playing a lot of formations, a lot of different looks, and a lot of alignments, Tim, and could be a little rough here early in the year. Bill Arnsberger just had a conversation with the referee trying to determine what exactly the problem is. It doesn't appear that there's anyone, anyone moving, though, Bob. I, they're usually calling it on that motion along right. the line. Illegal procedure against the offensive team declined be third down. So that penalty has been declined, won't be officially down, but I believe that penalty marker has been called against LSU four times. I think Florida has rejected two of the penalty calls. Third down, ten. Three wide out, single setback now. That setback is Rathjen on third and ten. Wickersham under pressure. Shows poise, complete. The 43-yard line. That's Raji McGee for the first down inside Florida Territory. Wickersham showing very good poise, and there was an excellent block there by Lance Smith on Scott Armstrong under that pressure situation, Tim. He tried to bring Scotty Armstrong up the middle. He just wasn't able to get there. Tommy Newhart almost had a hold of Wickersham, but cold blood in his veins. Just stood right in there and 
rocket it down the field. Florida leads 14 to 10, 417 to go third quarter. LSU on the drive. Pressure this time. This is Alonzo Johnson, number 93. He came in untouched from the left side, his seventh tackle of the day. The ball is snapped on the first sound, and because of that, he wasn't able to get out of what he had on. Alonzo Johnson comes free. If you shift a lot, every once in a while, you've got to get the ball off early. If you do it, sometimes you catch the defense sleeping. That time, Alonzo Johnson was wide awake. 10-yard loss, second down 20. Quick snap again, more pressure. Wickersham rolling into the pocket, has a man open. Nice catch by Eric Martin at the 28-yard line. Once again, that's an all-American kind of move. He had to change directions, lay his body out there, and he caught it for the first down. Slow getting up is Eric Martin. Oh, boy, was Tim Newton really pressuring Jeff Wickersham. There's a penalty in the LSU backfield as they check the status, the injury status down there of Eric Martin. There is also a penalty marker on the field. The shot of the Florida secondary. You see the linebackers dropping looking to the outside, trying to pick up that crossing receiver. It looks like Armstrong is in good shape, but Martin just kept coming across as Wickersham bought time by calling a play that rolled the pocket out to the left, gave him additional time, and they need Eric Martin in the football game. He's a big source of their power. Jimmy Bowman's in there right now. Pass interference was a call against Florida since it was a first down reception. It was declined. 29 yard line is the line of scrimmage for the ball now. By the way, Wickersham just moved to the third place in the Tiger passing record books with 2,795 career yards. You talk Tiger quarterbacks, you talk some great ones. First down 10. Quick toss, incomplete. Well, that was an almost that was intended for Jimmy Bowman, the man who would come in there in place of Eric Martin, Jarvis Williams, covering very well in the play. Again, Wickersham checks off on the line of scrimmage. This is a blitz checkoff. Four or five steps, break down to the inside, tries to get him the ball. Very catchable. Jimmy Bowman's got good hands, too. That's unusual to see from him. It will be second down 10, LSU at the 25-yard line. Excuse me, at the 29-yard line. Quick toss to the right side. This is the number 80, Raji McGee, who gets it to the 24. Gain of five, Adrian White with a tackle. 14 to 10, Florida leading LSU. Three minutes remaining, third quarter. Bob Neal and Tim Foley with you from Gainesville, Florida. Florida defense trying to break Wickersham's continuity a little bit. They're putting on more pressure. They don't want him to have time to just drop back, five-step drop, and throw it down the field where he wants to throw it. Hope you're enjoying our Southeastern Conference coverage, our premier telecast of 1984. Next week, Alabama at Georgia Tech. Oh. Third and five. All day to throw. And it's picked off down the sideline by Ricky Eason, number eight. Wickersham had a lot of time, did not see cornerback Eason coming up. And both teams have dodged bullets. This is like a heavyweight fight here in Gainesville. Both teams throwing knockout blows, and both teams parrying the blow. Good job by Ricky Eason. Eastman is the veteran of that Florida secondary. He jammed the split end, was holding in the flat, reading to the inside like an experienced cornerback should, and he picked up the ball, throw it all the way across the field to Mitch Andrews. That long drive by LSU proves to no avail. 14 to 10, the score remains. 2.32 to go, third quarter. Gator football. Opening conference game for these two teams. First game of the year for LSU. Florida lost last week to Miami, as I'm sure everyone in America knows. Bell pitches to Lorenzo Hampton. Nice job of blocking on the right side, and Hampton gets it out to the 28-yard line. Greg Dubrock, the strong side linebacker, with the tackle for LSU. Brock and Freddie Lewis have been switching off at that strong side linebacker position. Lorenzo Hampton, 64-yarder last week, untouched. He's got some great help from wide receivers. Gary Roll and Ricky Natiel both do a good job of blocking downfield for him. And 
handoff up the middle. It's close to a first down. John L. Williams, Roland Barbe meets him right over there on the left side. I'd like to say that once again, our crack booth crew is back with us in 1984. Kim Anderson spotting, David Carroll in the stats. And uh, in our deep in the confines of Florida field here is Paula Edge, who is new with our crew this year on our uh, font and graphic information coordination, and it's her birthday. Happy birthday to Paula. It's Bill Arnsbarger with Jesse Daigle on the sideline. Third down one. Hampton caught behind the line. What a great individual job to get the first down by Lorenzo Hampton. Nothing happening over there on the right side. He cut against the grain. Just barely got the first down. Just kind of agility bought him a first down. Just kind of on his own. You see Kerr out in front. Zimmerman opening up a hole. Somebody comes from the weak side, misses. There's Sean Burke can't grab a piece and he slides forward for a first down. First down, 10 Florida from the 32. The ball was tipped by 25 Pearson and then picked up by the linebacker Mike Brooks. We'll be back in a moment. This is Turner Network Television. Second wide receiver Eric Martin is okay. He went out injured earlier. He is back in the game for the Bengal Tigers. First and 10 at the 27 of Florida. Wickersham. Excellent defensive play in the secondary by number four, Vernell Brown, the defensive leader for Florida. The free safety, they call him possum. Vernell Brown made almost a miraculous play against uh, Miami last week in an attempt to save a touchdown. And here again, reading the ball, responding to the ball in the air, comes almost out of position to tip the ball away. Intended for 33, Gary James. Second down, 10 from the 27. A lot of time. It's picked off, but it will not count. Jarvis Williams caught that ball, but he was out of bounds in the end zone. It will not count. It will simply go as an incomplete pass. Third down for LSU from the 27. Now, this is a case just like Florida last time. And there's the man who made the interception, number 94, Brooks. This is just like when Florida had the ball. They needed to come away with points. The same is true for LSU here. They need to get something out of this drive. You can't have these turnovers happen and come away empty-handed time and again. Third down 10, Bengal Tigers. Into the air. Incomplete. Jarvis Williams and Vernell Brown both had an opportunity to intercept it. Number four and number 26, they ran smack dab into each other. It may have been Tim Newton who tipped it, too. Watch number 56 shooting up the middle here. This is where you need to have an unselfish player on the team someplace. Look around. If somebody else is going to make the play, there's no defend uh, offensive players in the area. Let them catch it. 44-yard field goal attempt coming up here. 20 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Juan Batanzo, he hit a 35-yarder earlier. It is good. And this gap has been narrowed to one. Florida 14, LSU 13 with 16 seconds remaining in the third quarter. One thing that is surprising me, Wickersham is getting time to throw the football. That offensive line of LSU, they're, they're grabbing the artificial turf and hanging in there with those big boys from Florida. Well, Arnsparger's got himself in a ball game. Bill Arnsparger in his debut as a collegiate head coach. Of course, Bill Arnsparger is the well-known defensive genius, as a lot of folks like to call him, from the Miami Dolphins. Ernst Parker is the 26th head coach at LSU, named as the Tiger coach December 2nd, 1983. He had been assistant head coach and defensive coordinator at Miami. He had one head coaching stint, and that is uh, when he coached uh, in the pros in New York Giants for a short time. Southern Mississippi leading Georgia, 13 to six in Athens between the Hedges, and look at that one, Ohio State. One-point lead over Oregon State at Columbus, Ohio. 
arnsberg has been around some good people too he played for woody hayes sid gilliam and he's played he he worked for don shuley he worked for blanton collier he's been around good people all his life and he just uh, i'm sure has absorbed a lot of good information but then again he's a creative individual himself matt defrank with the kickoff coming down to hampton at the one Lorenzo Hampton to the 22 to 23 yard line goes Lorenzo Hampton. 11 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Gators lead 14 13. Steve Rehaj making the tackle for LSU. Well, this is getting down to catch cases. We look like we're going to have ourselves a fine fourth quarter here from Gainesville. There's the information on the scoring drive. They got nowhere. <laughs> no drive at all. They, after taking the ball over on the interception, all that could happen was the field goal by Matanzos. Frankie Neal in motion. Pitch to Neal Anderson. Anderson to the 25. No more. Five yards off the right side. Florida defense at young Florida secondary really handled the pressure well on that last drive and you got to credit Zavin Ureli and the defensive secondary coach for Florida for getting them ready to go. That's the end of the third quarter. The score Florida 14 LSU 13. Got a good one brewing at Florida Field. Stay with us. This is Turner Network Television for 44 for LSU. Dubrock coming from the weak side. He used to back up Timmy Joyner Bob who's with the Houston Oilers now. One of the leaders on that defense. It's a steady, consistent player. Speaking of uh, college players in the pros, the secondary left Florida last year. Every one of them went to somebody's pro football camp. That's talent there. This will be third down five. Conversion play. Bell with some time. Now Barbe pressuring. Almost picked off. Ball's incomplete. Pass was intended for Ray McDonald. Prior to the time it got to McDonald's, it was almost knocked down. We have Ray McDonald here. Made a lot of progress in the last couple of years. He, he had some consistency problems in terms of catching the football, but they said he, he's improved a lot. Now, I wish I know he wishes he could have caught that one right there. Pressure on Bell was applied by Roland Barbe. Got him out of the pocket. Criswell to punt. He's had a 50-yarder and a 51-yarder. He gets this one up very nicely. Jefferson. Signals a fair catch at the 36. Check that. Jeffrey Dale signals the fair catch. Jeffrey Dale and Jefferson alternate as punt receivers. And there's Criswell. He got a 37-yarder off that time. Not as good as he would like to have had. 14-13 remaining in this football game. And a one-point game it is. The Gators 14, LSU 13. The teams came out marching downfield as though we were going to see ourselves a 47-46 football game. Then the defensive teams got into play, as did some penalties and mistakes. We'll talk about that in a second. On the first down, 10 from the 37-yard line. Here's Gary James. Very rough yardage for only about one yard. Leon Pennington, who was shaken up earlier, by the way, from Florida. The good news is, is that youngster is back in the ball game at linebacker number 45. Florida coaches on defense really didn't know what to expect from LSU. Ed Zombrecker was offensive coordinator at Wake Forest. Bill has been with the Dolphins, and they weren't sure what to expect. Now they've made some adjustments. They're playing well. Second down nine. After Sham. Incomplete. Threw it a little too hard. Intended for Martin out at the 46-yard line. Jeff Wickersham has thrown the ball 35 times in this game today. Completed the pass 23 times for 188 yards, two interceptions, one touchdown. By the way, Wickersham interception prone he is not. Only 17 all of last year while throwing for over 2,500 yards. One of the things the Florida defensive secondary is doing well now is they're covering zones, but they're locating the people in the zones and getting right in their hip pocket. On a third and nine, two receivers left, one to the right side. Single setback is Rafjan. He's in there to protect Wickersham. Short drop, complete to Martin. First down, Martin goes to the 47-yard line of Florida. LSU trailing on the drive. Once again, an automatic from Jeff Wickersham. He sees Eric Martin one-on-one -on -one out there. He's going to try to get him the football. The easiest, fastest way he can. Little slant in. Martin hangs on. Eason makes a nice tackle and gets some help from Brown. What a nice catch. He caught that on the rear part of his left hip and held on to it. LSU cheerleaders looking on as the Bengal Tigers drive. First down. 
They hand off to Dalton Hilliard. Look at that scat back, like a water bug to the 35-yard line. Dalton Hilliard. That was a case of almost for the Florida defense, a 12-yard gain by Hilliard. They almost had him several times. Gary James lines up outside the tight end to the left side of your screen. You can see him coming back down, leaving the, leading the play. Also, Lance Smith in there throwing a block. And you really can't, look at that lateral quickness. You really can't appreciate that kind of movement unless you're standing behind them. 73 yards on 19 carries for Dalton Hilliard today, and they have been tough inside yards. First down, 10 LSU. Florida 14, Bengal Tigers 13. 13 minutes remaining in this game. Wickersham pumps, releases incomplete. Wanted to go over there to Martin, but he was covered very well by Ricky Eason. It's a poker game. The Florida defensive secondary, Adrian White specifically, had given Wickersham the look of a safety blitz. Wickersham checked off. Adrian White came back out. There was coverage. Wickersham went to what he thought would have been there. It wasn't there. Second down, 10 LSU at the 35 of Florida. 37 passes thrown so far by Jeff Wickersham in this ballgame. Pitches to Hilliard. Needs a block. Doesn't get it. He's tripped up right at the 31-yard line. Hilliard was one block of way from a first down run and possibly more. Ricky Eason makes the tackle his fifth of the day. Pennington's been the real tackling horse for Florida. He has nine tackles on the afternoon for the Florida defense. Joe Kynes felt like getting him into the lineup as a starter would strengthen the middle of that defense, and obviously it has. Pro set, third down, two, Wickersham. It is complete to Fontenot for the first down, or at least very close to the first down. Check that it's Raji McGee, number 80, not number 40, who made the reception. And it is going to be a first down for LSU. I thought it was going to be picked off, Tim Foley. Jarvis Williams made a nice move on the ball, and then Fontenot used his body to screen off Williams. Look at that. Did you see how he just kind of turned his back on the defender and protected the football? Raji McGee. Now they say it was not a first down. It is fourth down in inches. The ball appears to be in first down territory. They did not mark it as such. So double tight ends. LSU goes for it on fourth down. Gary James gets the first down. It's funny, on the far side of the field, that fourth down, the first down marker is on the 25. The ball was on the 25. They marked it short. Nevertheless, LSU's Arnsparger, for the third time in this game, goes for a first down on fourth down and has been successful on all three attempts. He wants to maintain possession of the football, and he wants six. 11.30 to go in the game. Gators 14, LSU 13. Out of the pro set, play fake, Wickersham. Got it. Wide open, touchdown, Gary James! With the fan pass to beat the James to the score. The 4,500 Bengal Tiger fans in the corner of the end zone are celebrating. The rest of the 72,000 here aren't so happy. Fake the draw to Hilliard. Too deep zone. The safeties are running toward the corners with the wide receivers. James beats a linebacker straight up the field. Nice throw. In. Got a talented spin there. Ah, nice move by Gary James. That may be in the nice move, nicest move on the ball all afternoon is a little celebration of the end zone. So, for the first time in this game, the LSU Bengal Tigers have the lead 19-14. Now, here's a decision that uh, Arnsbarger hasn't had to make for 19 years, whether they go for one or two. Okay, we're going to watch Tommy Campbell against Timmy Newton. See, Kevin Langford comes down and helps. They don't want to leave Campbell alone on him. They hold Newton out. Wickersham has time to throw the ball and delivers it on the money. There's Arnsparger now trying to decide. The score is now 19-14. Obviously, if they go for the point after kick, it would be 20-14, giving the Gators a chance to come back with a point after to win 21-20. They make it 21 uh, with the two-point play here. Uh, the, worst, the best, they'd have to go for two in order to win. So it could put the pressure on the Gators' side. Arnsparger is going to go for two. They had to put that role in rule in professional football too it makes the game a lot more exciting you have a little bit more strategy for the coaches it gives them another thing to worry about martin mcgee split wide to the right side going for two points on the conversion wickersham it's mcgee gets 
the two-point conversion. LSU 21, Gators 14. McGee stretched his six-foot, two-inch frame about six-foot, three inches away <laughs> to get the touchdown. Eason covering, number eight. Eastman plays it correctly, plays it perfect. Jeff Wickersham, number five, 26 of 31 for 231 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. LSU leads in the game 21 to 14. There are your deep receivers for the Florida Gators. The deep man in the middle is Lorenzo Hampton. Roger Sibbald is on his right, and Joe Henderson on his left. The wings on the five-yard line. 11-24 here. This Florida team's got plenty of time and plenty of scoring punch to come back. Squib kick. It's covered down there by Ooh. Duncan Parham, a tight end, who gets leveled just as the whistle was blown. I think they say that he was leveled before the whistle was blown. No penalty marker. Parham is paid for picking that ball up. One of his, I think one of his own people hit him. This is the thing you always have to worry about when you're around a defensive. When the ball, the whistle's blown dead, you have all those maniacs coming in and taking a crack at you. Whoa. That's why they call this, as Norm Van Brocklin used to say, basketball is a contact sport, football is a collision sport. First down 10 from the 25. Nice move by John L. Williams. He gets only a yard or two, but he avoided a loss on the play by a good move in the backfield. Mike Brooks, number 94, with the tackle for LSU. Now it'll be second down long now. There's the scoring drive, 63 yards, nine plays. Wickersham threw it 24 yards to James for the touchdown, and then that Wickersham pass over there to McKee on the right side for the two-point conversion. Gator fans trying to cheer their offensive unit onto some points here. Kerwin Bell on an option, rolls right, keeps it out across the 30 to the 31-yard line. Chapman with a tackle. Now that's the first time I've seen the option from Florida this year. I know in talking to Bill Trout, the University of Miami defensive coordinator, he expected to see that last week, didn't show it. And I imagine they're just trying to let LSU know that they have it, so when they get down close to the goal line, it gives them something else to worry about. Interesting what Bill Arnsparker told us about having to prepare for that. Right, he said in professional football, you didn't really have to be too concerned about the quarterback running with the football. That was an adjustment he had to make. Double tight ends for the Gators. Third down four from 31. Neil Anderson close to the first down. His second effort may have gotten it. Let's see where they mark the position. Sixth tackle of the day for Sean Burks, number 57 for LSU. And look at this offensive line for Florida. Bromley, Zimmerman, Kerr down to the bottom. It's, un it's an unbalanced line. They brought Kerr, they brought Lomas Brown over, put him on the other side of the line. Almost got to the cutback lane. They spotted the ball right on the 35-yard line. They're bringing the sticks in from the so far side of the field. It's either going to be fourth down on an inch or two or first down for the Gators. You'll see it as we do. That's the first time I've noticed an unbalanced line, Bob. I know they had it in their game plan, but up until this point, they didn't really need to use it. They were being fairly effective with what they had. There's Kerwin Bell, the freshman quarterback, was 15 going into this season. Injuries, dropouts, academics, one thing or another have led this man to the spotlight. 12 of 21 for 158 yards, two interceptions, one TD on the afternoon. Quick opener, handoff to the front man. It's Joe Henderson, number 39. He drives out to the 40-yard line. This is one of the things that Florida does so well, and that's run the ball with power. And they even have a more powerful formation. They're putting, stacking both of those tackles together to the short side of the field which is concentrating LSU's defense back into the sideline. They better have a good coverage man on the, on the top side. Second down five from the 40 for the Gators. 9.21 to go in the game. It's 21 LSU, 14 Florida. Hand off Hampton. Hampton driving to the 44-yard line and stopped short there. They're going to say his forward progress is short of the 44 to about the 43-yard line. So it'll be third down short yardage. Dubrock, number 44, with a tackle for LSU. Here's one of, we taught you over here, announcers use the term, but it's a critical third down conversion. This is where the full ball game gets down to the line, time and time again. Especially on this one here, but you're only at the 45-yard line. Don't make any, take any chances that you're going to pay for with six points. Hampton, get some blocking. 
gets the first down to about the 47-yard line, running behind Scott Trimble, Jeff Zimmerman, Osborne and Burks combined for the tackle on LSU's side. And Johnny Simak, the defensive coordinator for LSU, and Pete Jenkins, the line coach, they got to move those offensive linemen around as they are doing. They can't go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Florida. I don't know if there's a team in the country that can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with that offensive line that uh, Phil Maggio has at Florida. Three minutes consumed on this drive. Florida started possession with 11.30 to go in the game. Now 8.23, first and 10 at the 47 of the Gators. Bell pitches to Hampton, runs right side again. Slashes his way to the 45-yard line of LSU. Two yards shy of the first down. Tony Caston, the sophomore from Monroe, Louisiana, making the stop for LSU. The Gators now just driving, eating up the clock. What they'd love to do is get down there with virtually no time left, score, go for two, and win 22-21. <laughs> That's probably part of their game plan. I'd imagine that they'd take that as an alternative. 7.51 left. Uh, well, we appreciate the dramas. As far as our telecast is concerned, that's for sure. Second down to Florida in LSU territory. This time it's Joe Henderson. He gets the first down to the 41-yard line. Big fullback Joe Henderson, 215 pounds, 6 feet tall, pro-type size fullback. Tackle made by number 96, Henry Thomas. And speaking of Henry Thomas, Tim Foley, Henry Thomas, 96, is the nose guard for LSU. We've talked about that matchup on the other side. Newton of Florida versus Campbell of LSU. Now it's Thomas of LSU versus Bromley, an All-American center for Florida. That's a good matchup right in the middle. Certainly is. Bromley's all SEC. Best contact blocker that I've seen. Makes contact, stays with his person. Anderson in motion on the first down. Quick opener. Goes to John L. Williams to the 39-yard line of LSU. Tony Caston making the tackle again. Tried to sneak in that quick pop, straight ahead dive back to the weak side. Off that same formation and motion, they've been running the toss. They were hoping Bromley could cut off Thomas before he get back there and make the play. Officials have called a clock stoppage momentarily. There is a player down for LSU. And speaking of Thomas, the nose guard we were talking about, he is shaken up on that play. A sophomore from Houston. Looks to be okay. They're going to take him off to the far side, though. We'll be back in a moment and check on his condition. LSU 21, Gators 14. Here's a look at it, Tim, on the injury play there to 96, Thomas. You see Bromley staying after him, made contact, staying after him low, and uh, Zimmerman dumped him over the top, and he twisted his ankle or his knee. There he is, stand, sitting in the, in the background there, number 96, Henry Thomas. A real find in spring practice has really come on strong. Second down seven, Florida. Seven minutes to go in this game. Neil Anderson gets it to the 35-yard line, bringing up that third down conversion again. One of the things that's happening here, Bob, is they're running most of the tosses into the sideline. They're trying to draw LSU's coverage into the sideline, leaving a receiver man-to-man -man on the wide side of the field. We're kind of lulling them to sleep a little bit. We've got another fella down on the field. That's Mike Cooley, who is down, number 58. He's the man who came in to replace Henry Thomas, the nose guard. So both nose guards have been injured, one, two, in two separate plays. Cooley did make the tackle on that play and is shaken up. Just a, just a simple toss back into the weak side. Cooley coming in behind the block of Bromley and makes the tackle. Looks like he got his knee caught underneath. Now, when you get down to the third guy on this, you're starting to get thin. They do have a man who plays a lot of different ways there, George Enriquez, who plays linebacker some, number 91, who can play middle guard, so I would suppose he'll be back in the game. Here. Either that or Roland Barbet was a nose guard last year, so they may take uh, Clarence Osborne, move him to the other end, and put Barbet at nose. That's what they've done, Tim. I just saw the switch made. Good call from Coach Foley once again. Here's some scores. Ohio State defeated Oregon State 22 to 14. And uh, Ohio State had to come from behind for that. In the third quarter, Syracuse and Maryland 13-7. Joe Avizano went to high school with uh, Jerry Sullivan, who's a receivers coach for LSU. And their coach was Joe Brodsky, who's a coach at the University of Miami. And in that same high school at the same time was Lee Corso. Back up in the Midwest coaching. At Northern Illinois University, as a matter of fact. Uh, they had a big win over West Texas State early in the year. There's Cooley being aided off the field. You don't like to see 
that kind of assistance when they lift that leg off the ground that means the trainers are concerned about some kind of serious injury we don't know that it is but that means they are concerned about it while we have a moment here we'd like to remind you that there's only 647 to go in the game both teams have two timeouts remaining LSU leads 21 14 it will be third down for Florida from the 35 when we come back to action I'd like to thank the SIDs from both schools for aiding us in our preparation as usual just tremendous cooperation Norm Carlson John Humanick and their fine staff here at Florida Bill Carr the athletic director and Joe Yates from LSU Bob Broadhead the athletic director the coaches the folks in the Southeastern Conference could be nothing could never be more cooperative than they have been but we certainly do appreciate it third down four from the 35 here's Florida up oh, and it's Neil Anderson on the ball and you got to hear Neil and Foley in stereo there <laughs> I'm sorry I can't help but I said shut up but that's that's 20 years when you see the ball come out it, it just that word just comes out it's conditioning just this don't dive out of the booth for the ball Tim that's all I'm worried about <laughs> This is the same thing that happened to LSU early on in the football game. Just a simple toss, can't find the handle. Now it's interesting, fourth and four, what do you do? Do you cover them or do you blitz them? That's a decision you have to make on defense. Rolls, blitz out wide to the left side, double tight ends, backs and an eye, fourth down for Florida. They pitch to Anderson. Gets the first down! Oh, what a gutsy call and a great job of poise play by the Florida Gators. On the right side, Neil Anderson gets the first down. but it shouldn't have. Galen Hall calling the plays. He's got that Oklahoma back background. They like to keep the ball close to the ground. Just an excellent job of blocking. Turn the corner. Fourth and four. You usually don't see a run, but they pulled it off. 21-14 LSU. Gators driving. 6.06 to go in the game. Florida at the 28-yard line of the Bengal Tigers. A broken play, and Bell is tackled at the 30. He wanted to pitch. Mike Brooks made the stop for LSU. Bell wanted to pitch the ball couldn't had to eat it he maintains his composure sometimes you so Lorenzo Hampton just went the wrong way a little bit sometimes you see a quarterback inadvertently just go ahead and turn around and toss it this is the most com composed young quarterback I've ever seen and he reminds me a lot of uh, the guy that I used to spend some time with Bob Greasy second down 12 Florida from the 30 now roll in motion to the top side receiving records for the Florida Gators the time he spent with Dwayne That's all that was. That was just simple, straight ahead, nothing fancy. Toss the ball and block them. Six and a half minutes, roughly, of possession time. A 15-yard run by Hampton. He has 78 yards on the day. We're down to four minutes and 55 seconds remaining in this game. Hampton scored last week against Miami. A two-point conversion coming up. What Florida likes to do is put two wide receivers to one side, and they run a little bit of a pick pattern. Now, picking is illegal. You're going to see the block. Nice block by Crawford Kerr. Hinson leading the way, kind of brushes off Ricky Chapman, but Lorenzo Hampton is just motoring upfield. They've come close to finding that seam all day long, and they finally wore him out. Go back to the two-point play. They'll put two wide receivers out to the same side and try to run some kind of a combination, as did LSU, or they'll run that play pass that has worked for them several times down in the inside the 10-yard area. I doubt that you're going to see finer running backs in terms of four that we're going to see in this game, Anderson and Hampton. And 
Hilliard and James, and it looks like they're going for one. They're going for one. See there, I'll jump the gun. That's probably a good decision. You have a lot of time left in the football game. They have the wind. They've got a guy that can, that can kick it out of the dugout. Bobby Raymond is the point after and short field goal kicker. Criswell, the punter, holds. It'll be a 20-yard from that hash mark for the point after. It is good. And it is now 21-21. Gators and LSU with a lot of football left, 455. Both teams have used one timeout in the second half, meaning that both teams have two timeouts remaining. We're going to have a great finish here at Florida Field in Gainesville. You stay with us for Southeastern Conference football. This is Turner Network Television. Updates on scores around the country. Southern Miss is leading Georgia 13 to 9 at halftime. That game in Athens. And Mississippi leading Memphis State 12 0. That's Ole Miss. Now the ball went out of the end zone on the fly. That means there will be a penalty and the ball will come out to the 30 yard line. So you see, when you kick that ball out of the end zone this year, it hurts you badly. They give you an extra 10 yards on offense. So LSU is going to have good field position with four minutes and 55 seconds. No time elapsed since the ball went out of the end zone. Bill Archbarger's de defense uh, played pretty well on that drive. Played pretty well. They played solid. They needed to come up with a big play somewhere along there, and they didn't. He's on the sideline conferring with Mike Archer, who's sending in the defense. When you run it as much as Florida did, it's tough to have the big play. Only one pass on that Florida drive. That was Alonzo Johnson who jumped over there, and it looked as though he touched the shoulder pad of the offensive lineman for LSU, John Harrell. If that's the case, they'll call encroachment. If he didn't touch him, he can get back. I think they're saying he did not touch him. They wave off the penalty mark. You know, regardless of whether either team comes out with a victory or this game ends in a tie, Charlie Pell made the proper decision. The thing to do with five minutes left in a football game is to tie up the game. There's no sense in putting yourself in a hole for no reason at all. That's right. LSU doesn't want to just sit on it now. They might try to do that had they had a one-point lead following a missed two-point conversion. Hilliard. He came into this ball game, has made a couple of key pressure plays, and that time, a tackle for a loss in the backfield of Dalton Hilliard. Try to get it to Hilliard, see if he can find a lane back inside, and you see Cor filling. He just found the open area before Hilliard did, filled it. Good pressure coming up from the outside by Pat Miller, turned the play back to Cor. Oh, the noise is deafening at Florida Field. Second down, 12. The pass complete to Martin. Breaks the tackle, dives out about one yard shy of the first down to the 39-yard line. Ricky Eason with the tackle for the Gators. It's the quickest way to quiet a crowd. Get the ball, uh, an opposing crowd, get the ball to Eric Martin. He's a hair away from breaking it. Before the game's over, they're going to fake that slant and try to hit him on a takeoff. Martin has eight catches for 95 yards now. Double tight ends for LSU, third down one. This is Gary James, first down to the 37-yard line, 38-yard line of Florida. Mark Corp with the stop for the Gators. And Jeff Wickersham has thrown for 242 yards in this game. Tied 21-21, clock down to 344. Both teams, one team, as a matter of fact, Florida with two timeouts. They say now, officially, that LSU has but one timeout remaining in the game. Rick 
Wickersham pumps, goes to the sideline, completes it to Gary James. James inside Florida territory to the 45-yard line of the Gators. LSU driving. What they wanted there, Bob. Wickersham pumped Martin. He broke up the field. Credit Ricky Eastman with an excellent job of coverage on Eric Martin. He didn't bite on the short pass, covered him deep. Wickersham had to dump it. First down 10, LSU from the 45, the Florida Gators. 72,000 looking on, 4,500 of them from Baton Rouge. So the 34, not much on that one, it was Dalton Hilliard. He was tripped up by nose guard Tim Newton, who has been a force in this game today. And that's what happens when you leave Newton man-to-man -man on most centers in the country. He's just a dominant force. He's 280 pounds. He's strong. He can dump the basketball. I mean, he's, he's illegal, <laughs> but they let him play. Raji McGee splits wide to the right side. Martin comes down here to the bottom of your screen on the left. Misdirection play goes to Dalton Hilliard and number 78, Tommy Duhart led the way for the tackle that time. The freshman from Belle Glade, Florida. Locked down to 231. We could be looking at a tie ball game. <laughs> we are looking at one currently. <laughs> Bill Arnsbarger, who's also looking at the tie ball game. Bill Arnsbarger's thinking down the road. He's talking to Archer. He's letting uh, Pete Mangurian and Ed Zombrecker run the offense. He's thinking about when LSU is on defense. Third down eight from the 43. Scrambling Wickersham. Going to run with it. Takes a lick. Knocked out of bounds at the 39-yard line. On the third down eight, the defense of Florida holds Mark Korf, who has really risen to the occasion on this drive made the stop again and now LSU has a decision to make here 159 remaining in the game looks as though LSU may be deciding to stay with it and go for it on fourth down looks that way Raston's in the football game uh, he's their best blocker also an adequate receiver Mitch Andrews back in the football game they're going for it the Gator fans Steering their team to a defensive play. Wickersham, first down to Martin, breaks the tackle. Martin to the 23 and a half yard line of Florida. Korf with the tackle, but Eric Martin with his ninth catch of the day, putting on an All-American performance for the Bengal Tigers. Now something that you're not going to see is Rathjen did a nice job of standing up Alonzo Johnson, giving Wickersham time to unload the ball. Ricky Eastman's there to make the hit. Got to wrap up Eric Martin. And Mark Korf is down on the far sideline at the 25-yard line. He's the linebacker being attended to by the University of Florida trainers. Clock down to 151. It will be first down 10 LSU. It's tied 21-21. LSU's field goal kicker, Juan Batanzos, was very consistent and very accurate last year. But as Bill Arnsparger told us, Tim, yesterday in our meeting, he had been very inconsistent in the fall as far as kicking field goals. Uh, uh, he has two today, however. Yeah, kickers like to do that just before the game, just so the coach can't relax. This much. about five. <laughs> well, that's what, that's what happened yesterday. Well, Charlie Pell. Wondering what to do defensively. They're checking on the condition of linebacker Mark Korf. Looks to be okay. We'll report on his condition when we return. A tie game at 21. This is Turner Network Television. LSU head coach Bill Arnsparger has gambled on fourth down four times in this game and won four times. Well, first down 10, Bengal Tigers at the 23-yard line of the Florida Gators. A delay by Hilliard. He falls on his own fumble at the 25. I think it was Tim Newton. It sounds like we're blowing the horn for Tim Newton for Florida today, but he has been a dominant force in this game, and I believe he's the man who scraped that ball loose from Hilliard as he ran to the right side. One of the reasons that they try to run some counters, 
counters is to take it advantage of his quickness. A lot of times you'll, if you're real quick, you'll run yourself out of the play. Second down 12 LSU from the 25. This time it's Gary James. Gary James stopped at the 23. It'll be third down and right about 10 yards. He got back to the original line of scrimmage. Mark Korf, who had been shaken up for LSU, came over to the near sideline. He's back in the game and is okay. Korf is back in there, and Florida elects to use one of their two remaining timeouts. Gives me a moment to remind you that this telecast is authorized under broadcasting rights granted by the Southeastern Conference and is intended solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, rebroadcast, or retransmission of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game in whole or in part without the express written consent of the Southeastern Conference and Turner Broadcasting is prohibited. You do that so well. <laughs> Thank you. It's my favorite part of the game. That's for sure. Jesse Daigle in the yellow shirt there. There's Ed Zombrecker, the coach at Arizona, then went to Purdue University for several years, then joined John Makovic down at Wake Forest. Makovic's now the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. He called Bob Matheson on the phone, who he knew was close to Bill Arnsbarger, and asked to get an interview with Bill. Bill liked what he found and talking to him and hired him. Now he's running that offense. We talked to Wickersham before the game, Tim, and asked him how LSU plans to attack this Florida defensive team, which might be an interesting point right here. Well, we're going to try to do basically, I guess, the same things Miami did. You hit the deep sideline routes, things like that, where we can conserve time and yet go down, down the field. The deep sideline routes. Let's see if that comes in here from the 23-yard line. Third down, LSU. They're coming, Bob. And they get him, number two, coming from strong safety. Adrian White, second time today he applied pressure. First time he sacked the quarterback. What a play by the Gator defense. 48 seconds remaining in this game. Florida did an excellent job of disguise. Wickersham's smart enough. And they showed that blitz early. He'd have checked off. Adrian White waited. He hit it, hit it on the ball, came right through, and pulled down Wickersham before the receiver had a chance to get into his final break. There is Juan Carlos Batanzos, a place kicker from Mexico City. He is going to attempt a 46-yard field goal. He has two field goals previously today, even though he's been inconsistent in the fall training camp. There have been two field goals for Batanzos earlier today, one of them a 35-yarder. Something to consider here, Bob. Florida is so big up front. As a kicker, you have to feel like you've got to get it up in a hurry. If he does, he's going to be knocking it into a stiff wind. So we'll see what happens. Batonzo had a 35-yarder and a 43-yarder. This one's for 46. 45 seconds to go in the game. It's down to this. Far wide to the left side. Arn Sparger's picture says it all. remaining in this game. Looked like the snap was high from center. I don't know if the holder ever really got it down right. Well, yeah, he got it down. He had time to hit that one. On a first down, 10 from the 29. Fell. at the 39, very close to a first down. Greg Dubrock with the tackle. Hurry up offense for Florida. They want to get in shape here for a possible field goal attempt. You see the time in the lower left-hand side of your picture. you got to get some containment from those defensive linemen for LSU. First down, Florida. Clock goes to 12 and stops while they move the sticks. Florida with a hurry-up offense. And it's starting to rain here at Florida Field. Clock hasn't started yet. They still haven't finished moving the sticks. If you're a defensive back in this situation, get depth. Every one of the receivers should be covered so you can get a jam and prohibit their progress downfield, inhibit their progress downfield. Clock running, seven, six, five, it stops at five seconds. There are five seconds remaining in this game, tied at 21. Oh my, what a beauty we have at Florida Field. Now, what do you do? How 
far was that uh, youngster kicking from yesterday, Bob? The furthest, I think, was about 60 yards. He can kick from 60. Now, the wind would be at his back, but we're incredibly out of the distance there. I think we could be looking at a tie here. Now, five seconds left, and Florida's going to just have to go for it. Archer's yelling at the defensive backs from the sideline. You want to position people at the sideline. If they catch the ball coming across the middle of the field, time will expire. Five seconds remaining, and the officials are going to penalize Florida for five yards. They move it back to the 36-yard line. It's really uh, not a significant penalty at this point. It's a delay of game call against the Gators. It doesn't really matter much. They weren't in any kind of field goal range anyway, and it all matters whether they get it down to the end zone. Both teams showing an amazing amount of poise this early in the season. Here's something to watch for. A new defensive pass interference rule this year does not spot the, the ball where, the, where it's interfered with. It's only a 15-yarder. you got to figure LSU is going to interfere, if anything, here. It would only be a 15-yarder if that happens. Out of bounds. Out of time. And out of time. And at Florida Field, the Florida Gators and the LSU Bengal Tigers have played to a tie in their Southeastern Conference opener.